Yeah, very good afternoon. Welcome, everybody, to the Sunday Sin Bin. And we've got a, a very special injury crisis, which we'll go to very shortly and get all the details on that. Overnight, of course, though, uh, we saw uh, yesterday Penrith 28 beat Manly 16, Parramatta 32, the Dogs 10, and the Roosters a very, very gutsy win, which we'll go further into. The Roosters beat the Knights 38 points to four. They were our uh, winners and losers yesterday. And, of course, the whole week, South beat Canberra, Melbourne over Cronulla. Uh, the Broncos give the Titans a decent start and then showed a lot of heart to come back and beat the Broncos. And I'm in Brisbane today, and I tell you what, there's a lot of Broncos uh, jumpers in and around the place, which is absolutely fantastic. In the beautiful studios of Triple M Brisbane, Gordon Tallis, good morning or good afternoon to you. Welcome, Anthony. Thank it's you. It's about time you come up to Queensland and visit the most beautiful state yeah, in well, this country. And these stu- I tell you, I've been in radio 100 years. These studios are exceptional. They are then. so beautiful. Beautiful view of the mm. mighty brown snake, which we call the Brisbane River. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the um, <laughs> the Gordon Teller studios are beautiful. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? And in our Sydney studio, of course, from NRL 360, Paul Kent, how are things with you? Yeah, pretty good. Um, not quite. We don't have a beautiful brown snake to look at. Mm. Jeez. Mm. I tell you what, that's sort of really putting lipstick on a pig, isn't it? Trying to... Yeah. Dress up that river as something special. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's not too bad. Hey, you know what, Paul? Sometimes you just got to deal with what you got to deal with. After all that rain in Sydney, when I flew into, uh, flew in over the beautiful Sydney Harbour, mm. it was like Shrek Swamp there for a couple of, <laughs> oh. like for a couple of weeks. It was that brown. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, when it flooded. Mm. Actually, is Come it the Sydney it now, Harbour Gordon. or is it the end of the Parramatta River? I don't Gordon. know. Gordon. Where does it start? Gordon. Is it the Parramatta River? Gordon, I can't Where? believe and you you're guys trying call to. It a harbour. Oh, the, I think the Parramatta River starts River, around Hunters Hill somewhere, mate. Is it? I think so. And then goes where to? Uh, out to Parra. Out to Parra, oh. out through Homebush, out to bloody through Clyde and out into Parramatta. So rivers don't flow towards the ocean? Well, so they, do, they do. Right. They, this one goes from Parramatta to about Hunters Hill, I think, Paul, am I right? And then it becomes the ocean. <laughs> Something along those lines. Look, the fact is you've got a dirty brown river and we've got the most beautiful harbour in the That's world, it. and for some reason, in that it reminds typical, me of Venice. Yeah, that typical Queen. Really, Venice. Mm. Anyway, I'm sure, Paul. What you, wherever Venice you live, now. you find a way, Paul, to have a wonderful weekend. <laughs> wherever you live, you will find a way. Anthony, Sydney's Leslie Norton Anthony, have a wonderful uh, weekend. Anthony, I'll be oh, listen. Too early to start going here, Anthony. You've gone up. Your reason you're up there is because you've gone up for your big cash job. No, all right? no, you I have. Not. So if you want to start putting, yeah, crack shot. Uh, yeah, you know, taking pot shots at people. Mm. That's where we'll start with Anthony. So you're up there for the filled with cash. You've got all this lettuce in your in your pockets right now. Yeah. Mm. So do your best, mate. Well, mate, I was at the twenty four seven sports bar in Sydney last night, so I haven't had a gig. I've come up here to see those two beautiful grandkids of mine. And uh, I'll come back to you because Les Norton's actually a compliment. <laughs> That's a compliment to you. Now, Hoops, welcome to you, old son. Good afternoon, Anthony. Good now, to see uh, good people. You're looking very sharp up there in your crisp white shirt. You sure there hasn't been any sort of arrangement this morning? No, well, there hasn't. But even if there was, let's just remember uh, to everybody who often says, I'm out uh, looking for a gig, I'm out looking for an urn, I'm out hosting something. I, I actually run a business that provides this service. So there's nothing wrong with that. Right. More there's nothing wrong with rock. charging yeah. people either right. because, as I say, I run yeah. a business that does that. Yeah. Do you go to NRL? You yeah. should probably go to Fox League and not charge them hoops. But do you do that? <laughs> More power to Rocket Industries is what I say, Anthony. So I'm yeah. glad you're out and about. You're a man of the people. I'm surprised they let you across the border with some of the bets that you've made against Queensland and the Gold Coast and the threats and well, mm. well all the, the Gold rest Coast of it. mayor has been out striding the streets looking for him. Yeah, <laughs> Anthony's been hiding under the dirt <laughs> playing with the grandkids. Yeah, well I tell you what, I'm going to be seeing Tommy Tate over the course of the next 40 hours. I'm going to break bread with him. I'm going to break bread with, with Mr. Justin Holbrook. I mean, let's face it. What I said all along was right anyway. I proved to be right. But who, it's not a matter of who's right or wrong. The Titans will be okay long term. It's not a matter of me being right, even though I am right this time. So let's just leave it there till I catch up with Tom Tate. We've got more important things to talk about here, boys. Uh, Brett Morris, Adam Reynolds, Lindsay Collins, Cam Murray. That's just the start of who's injured here, Hoops. Yeah, those scenes in the Sydney Roosters dressing room last night, just heartbreaking where you've got Brett Morris, you've got Trent Robinson sitting there not saying anything. Then Josh Morris, his twin brother, uh, comes in and they embrace and uh, the tears uh, in Brett's eyes summed up the scenario. In all likelihood, that that will probably be uh, the last that we see of the, the great Brett Morris in the NRL. 
Um, and that wasn't where it ended for the Sydney Roosters. Lindsay Collins is also concerns that he's done his ACL as well and most likely will be out for the rest of the season. There is a little ray of sunshine at Parramatta around Nathan Brown. There were fears he might be out for, in all likelihood, the season as well. But this morning, uh, it looks as though it's a hip pointer injury. And uh, look, he's an outside chance to be okay for round nine. Adam Reynolds at your bunnies. Mm. is a minimum four weeks as a result of uh, doing some ligaments in his thumb. So it has been carnage over the course of the last uh, 48 hours, Anthony. All right. Well, the first one, boys, I know that everybody wants to talk about is uh, Brett Morris because those scenes yeah. in the dressing room, as you said, and he and his brother are both wonderful ambassadors to our game. And doesn't matter what side you support, you have to say the Roosters have shown so much courage this year. This on the back of it, here's what yeah. Trent Robinson had to say. Yeah, it's one of the proudest and worst sheds I've been in. That's what it was. You know, you've got a really group of, group of guys that really care for each other and they love playing together and we're really proud of the way that we're playing. And then you've got a guy that's a legend of our game, one of the best wingers that we've seen and has possibly just finished his career. So, um, yeah, it's just flattening, extremely flattening. It's hard to explain. It's sort of the game tonight pales in significance to, to how you feel about uh, Brett and, you know, obviously Lindsay as well. So I suppose here, boys, Hoops, I suppose if you're a passive rugby league supporter and you watch Brett Morris before that injury, you'd be saying, why is the coach talking about him possibly playing his last game? Because it's a season-ending injury. Yeah, I know it's a season-ending injury, but, I mean, were we all absolutely convinced that he wasn't coming back next year? Oh, I think that was indication that that Trent Robinson certainly thinks that way. Mm, Uh, And given he's the coach of the club charged with uh, signing him or not, I dare say he wasn't coming back this year. I think given Brett's injury history as well would also have a a big part to do with it because I know for years, like the last State of Origin series that Brett featured in, which a lot of people, uh, it it came out of left field when he was picked for the Blues, a lot of people thought that in all likelihood he'd probably retired from rep footy, but uh, they brought him back into the arena. He was outstanding as always, but he's on limited training. He could only train one day a week as the result um, of ongoing knee injuries that he's managed for the course of his career. So uh, he's an ornament to the game, Brett Morris, and his brother's the same. I mean, his brother bagged a, a pair of tries last night, scored one after Brett had gone off with that awful injury and then goes into the sheds afterwards. Speaking to people this morning who are in that Roosters sheds, I said it's some of the most emotional scenes that you've seen in football and the way that Brett spoke after the game where he said to the boys, I'm so proud to have led this group of people at such a prestigious club. He captained them last night. That was the first time that he captained the Chooks. He said it was just such a proud moment. And he said, if this is the end of the road for me, boys, then I'll hold my head high. And I want the rest of you to all continue to soldier on. It's next man up at this club. That's always the mentality. Jared Wayre Hargraves jumped in and spoke really passionately as well. I mean, the Roosters, when you look at their injury toll, with these two players suffering ACLs, I think that's now five ACL injuries for that club in the last 18 months. Throw in yeah. Luke Keary, throw in Victor Radley and Sammy Verrills from last year as well. Well, and, and and the scenes to me reminded me, I remember when Brent Tate hurt his knee and he's sitting in the dressing room and it can be the loneliest place and to have his twin brother there and, you know, come up and cuddle him. Like not too many players have their siblings sitting right beside mm. them where they can, you know, go over there and they know how hard that you know, uh, that they've worked through their career in fairy tales. And I think Trent Robinson said fairy tales don't often happen in, um, in your career, but that probably is a fairy tale, you know, to go out, you know, captain and play the way he has. Like he's had so many wonderful moments. He's not going to be remembered for his last game. So many players think they're going to be remembered for their last games. I think he's going to be re- he's going to be remembered for the career that he's had. And it's been amazing. Mm. You know, arguably people talk about him being the greatest winger ever. I, I don't take that much notice of the you know muscly touch judges. You know the wingers <laughs> going around. There. It's not it's not a position that I focus on. But um, every time he's ever gone on the field, I tell you what, the bloke that was standing at op- uh, opposite him would have had his hands full. Absolutely, and um, there was a little bit of a blow up there, boys, on the Fox League coverage about uh, where I heard Vossi and the guys blowing up about the medicab and where was the medicab to carry him off and then there was a suggestion that perhaps he wanted to walk off the field I don't know that that was quite cleared up in the end yeah the way it's been explained to me was that Brett said I I want to I'll get up and and I'll be assisted but I will I will also walk I don't want the medicab 
Mm. So that was why. Trent Robinson spoke about it after the game. He, the medicab was there, and, and uh, while the, the commentators blew up, the, the fact was that Morris rejected the medicab. He wanted to walk off, and, and that's that. I think that's symbolic of the man that he is. That uh, right to the very end, and that's always, it was always a very traditional thing in rugby league that if you could walk off, you did want to walk off. You, you wanted to have not the assistance of the medicab and things like that. And I think that uh, I, I quite admire uh, Morris for doing that. Hey, mm. Kenty, mate, you've been around a while. Where does he sit with the greatest wingers that you've watched? Oh, he's right there, Gordon. Look, yeah. he, he's a, look the game, the, the, that position has changed a lot in the past, well, since, since probably Wendell came along. Wendell came along and suddenly there was that bullocking forward and there was an extra forward run. And then the back five became so important. At the same time, the wingers had to become acrobats where they would leap for the ball and catch the ball. So it's gone a massive transition from the first 100 years or 80 years of the game where basically wingers just sat out on the edge of the field and, and had a role that they just were there to, to receive the final pass off the centre to now where the, the position is uh, you've got to take tackle one or tackle two, hit up on the kick returns, you've got to... Uh, you've got to be there for tackle five or six uh, when the cross kick when you're in, in the red zone. There's all sorts of reasons now that the wingers are, are, are one of the most important positions in the back line. Years and years and years ago, the centre was generally the most gifted athlete in the in the back line, and that was where all the money went. That Back in the Gazney days and things like that, then it became the halves over time, and the wingers were always, as you said, they, wingers were always the guys that hung around with footballers. That, that's just the way they were. <laughs> But it's changed now. They are they are vital to a team, and you so look important. at the teams that have had that, that have got uh, are having success now in the competition. Have all got great wingers. They're not no longer just finishers. They've got to start your set or the kick return, and they've got to be there in the end. And, and Morris is probably the best I've seen at that acrobatic catch in the corner and coming down with the ball because he's tall, he's athletic, he's tough, he's disciplined. He's intelligent. He's got it all. He's got all the boxes ticked there, and so out of that, you've got a bloke who you can trust to do his job every time, and that's why he's always so valued by his teammates. And you talk about the great wingers, Gordon. He he can do what all the, all the great wingers did. He, he's also got in his arsenal. He's just that good. So, and he's a try scorer. He's he's I think fourth now all time try scorer. Yeah. Which says what uh, that says it all, yeah, doesn't it? Says a lot. Mm. Not well, just boys. in terms of uh, his uh, finishing ability, Paul, but like you look at the, the you know some of the champion wingers that we've seen over the course of the last 30, 40 years. You had your blockbusting types, your Eric Growth, those explosive Wendell, Lottie, Takiri, Manu, Vatavai, those sorts of players. But I reckon in terms of finishes, whatever the situation, right? Whether you needed a, a little uh, chip kick over the top, whether you had to be catching um, a, a cross field. Uh, aerial acrobatic style of a jump, whether w whatever the scenario, whether you had to be contorting yourself around the corner post, Brett Morris has done it as good as anyone. Yeah, good. Well said, boys. And uh, obviously we've spoken at length over the last few weeks about the uh, Roosters injury toll. Now we've got Brett Morris, we've got Lindsay Collins, we've got uh, obviously Luke Keary, we've got Jake Friend, we've got Boyd Cordner, and that's not all of them, but we need to move on now to the Rabbitohs uh, on the injury list again, Hoops, because the Rabbitohs have Melbourne this Thursday night, no Latrell Mitchell, and now no Adam Reynolds. Yeah, no Adam Reynolds. There's some concerns around Cam Murray as well. So, look, the update with Adam Reynolds, he's a brave uh, little playmaker. He sustained the injury during the game. He still played the entire 80 minutes. Uh, it's ligaments in his thumb. It'll be a minimum of four weeks required on the sidelines. It's a blow for the Bunnies, no doubt. But at the same time, it underlines what a masterstroke South's agreeing to sign Benji Marshall was uh, because Benji can move straight into that position. They'll probably bring Cody Walker back in to play 5-8. Uh, AJ, um, Alex Johnson can fill in at fullback mm -hmm. and away they go until Latrell comes back. Okay, that's a big game that we will have for you too, uh, Triple M on uh, Thursday night. Dan will call that one for you. Melbourne South, that's going to be one of the games of the year. And if you're working or you're going to be driving or whatever, just tune into Triple M wherever you are and we'll have that game for you. Just repeating those scores from earlier on before we move on. Thanks to our mates at Tyre Power, South 34 beat Canberra 20, Melbourne 40, Cronulla 28, Broncos 36, Titans uh, were 28 in the end. 
And then Penrith, 28, Manly, 16. Parramatta, 32, Dogs, 10. Roosters, 38, Knights, 4. That's all the scores. Thanks to our friends at Tyre Power. This is the Triple M Sunday Sinbib. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back with more with Hoops. And so too, Paul Kent and Gordon Tallison Maroon as Triple M rocks the footy. And welcome back to the Sunday Sinbin. And we are right across the uh, east coast of Australia <laughs> through Brisbane, Sydney, and everywhere in between. Got a game for you this afternoon at 4 o'clock. It's the Dragons and the Tigers. Dan will call that one for you. We've got Hoops. We've got Kenty, Gordy Tallis. And Maroon, and coming up before uh, 2 o'clock, we've got Isaiah Yo from the Panthers, the uh, co-captain of the Panthers, to come on have a chat. Of course, the Panthers got a big game coming up in Dubbo against South in a few weeks. That's Isaiah's hometown, of course. Just before we move on to the next game, though, uh, Hoops, just a couple of the injuries we could just go over a little bit more detail again. For South, also Campbell Graham and Cam Murray. Let's start with Campbell Graham. Yeah, concerns for Campbell Graham is that he's fractured his hand, so he could be out for anywhere between four and six weeks, which means that their backline stocks, by the time you put Latrell and also Adam Reynolds in there as well, they are starting to get a little bit thin. And uh, then so Cam Murray? Cam Murray uh, ankle ligaments or syndesmosis as uh, the medical Experts like to to use the terminology these days. Um, In all likelihood, uh, he'll be missing for a couple of weeks as well. And just, you did go over it, but if I could just get the details again on Lindsay Collins, who got a bit overshadowed there with the Brett Morris stuff. Well, yeah, the concerns and the fears are that it's an ACL similar similar to BMOS, and that'll mean that for Lindsay it's season over. So like we say for the Roosters, uh, it really was, as much as it was a, terrific win for the club up there at Newcastle last night. It was overshadowed completely by the horrendous injury toll and the fact that uh, that club at the moment, I think they've got about $4 million worth of talent on the sidelines as a result of major injuries. I've just got an update here uh, from Souths as well, uh, Anthony. So Adam and uh, Cameron will both see the surgeon. That's Adam Reynolds and Cam Murray tomorrow see the surgeons uh, and their situations might change slightly depending on the opinion. Okay, let's uh, open it up now to you, Kenty, and and you two, Gordy. So these two sides, obviously, Kenty, start the season as, uh, you know, two of the Premiership hotshots, the Roosters and the Bunnies. I mean, now, mate, they're not just losing one player or a couple of players. They've both got millions of dollars worth of talent on the bench. Yeah, I think the Roosters are in a deeper hole than the Rabbitohs. The Rabbitohs, the, the light is that the, the, a lot of these players will be returning towards the end of the season. Uh, and that's not a bad thing if you can get them back because it gives them almost, for want of a better term, a, a mid-season freshen up. Uh, even though they're going through rehab, they're not going through the, the, the grind of, of, of playing every week. So in some ways, if you have a couple of injuries and you can get them back and you haven't caused too much damage to the you, – you, you're standing on the ladder – then I think you're in uh, pretty good shape. So I, I think Souths are okay, but the Roosters are the fact that they're losing players for the for the season, such as Luke mm. Keary, the, they've lost Jake Friend. Like these players aren't going to be back this year now. But Brett Morris might be back this year. Lindsay Collins might be back this year. Uh, and if you go through the history of uh, the premiers in the last twenty odd years, you generally can only afford to have one, possibly two, of your best players not playing grand final day. So mm. you can get away with one injury and the Roosters are a club that, that you know, you've got to admire their spirit and, and their ethos of next man up. But in, in, in inevitably it's going to take a toll and I think it's going to start taking a toll very soon. Uh, as well as they played on uh, last night, uh, the fact that they were down to 11 men on the field last night, the fact that they were still scoring tries against Newcastle, which must be extremely concerning for Adam O'Brien and 11... 11-man team can outpoint him. Uh, but the, at some point, it will take a toll on the Roosters. And I just think that it's we've, we've probably reached that, that that little sort of fulcrum now. And we're going to tip over the edge now. I think that's the point. South, I, I think, are okay. They, they're, they're still in pretty good shape. And they'll get the players back. There's no one going for the season at South, is there? I don't think so. I don't, no, can't, no, nothing no, comes no to you're mind. right. They're only more shorter term. Yeah, they're all short term, yeah. so they'll come back as long. And, and they're travelling so. They've only lost one game all season, so they are travelling so well at the moment. I don't think South. Are, I, I think I think they're in really good shape to win a premiership. To be honest. Yeah, I think. Look, and then I just think with both clubs, South have more gear. So when the whips start cracking, uh, you know, Roosters might get through the competition. You know, and they might struggle against Penrith and Melbourne and South and those bigger clubs. But when it comes time to push and shove. You think South will have more in their kit bag when it comes 
time to the business end of the season and you've got to put three, four, five wins together. Um, are they overachieving a little bit now? Uh, the Roosters, I think they are um, with the amount of injuries, but it just shows how strong their roster is, how good you know, uh, the depth is in their um, organisation. Sam, Sam Walker's been absolutely outstanding, but, you know, a young guy coming in at the moment, you think that he's going to, you know, be he'll be the player that will be targeted the most on other people's game plans with no Kiri and those guys coming back in and AJ Cran. So you think South have more in the tank than what the Roosters will have at the business end of the season. Boys, what about that? Uh, speaking of that game as a whole last night, now Roosters 38 nights for Gordy and the Knights have only won three games all year. Yep. And a couple of times they've been absolutely pumped like they were last yeah. night. What's going on there? I mean, I know they've had their fair share of yeah, injuries they've got too. injuries as well. Yeah. You know, and then their roster's not as, you know, not as deep as some of the other clubs. You know, they played the Titans here. I can only talk about that. They were, you know, they were way down on troops and there was a death to one of their, you know, SG ball players. So they were knocked around a bit about three, three weeks ago. For me, um, they're not laying the platform. I, I think they're struggling for a leader, Newcastle, and they got Clemmer and Frizzell and those guys there, but no one's leading them, you know, when the chips are down. And, you know, as soon as Mitchell Pearce goes, like last year when Mitchell Pearce played good, I think he got five or six men of the matches or it might have been the year before, they were winning. They were on a streak. And if Carl and Ponger or, the, or Mitchell Pearce don't play good, it seems to be that the whole organisation doesn't go good. And that's and that's danger signs, you know. And I don't, I don't know where Newcastle go. You know, Nathan Brown was a problem and they – Thought they'd get Adam O'Brien. It's come out of a great system. He come out of the Melbourne and Roosters system, but I haven't watched that club improve. All right, boys. Uh, let me just play you some audio of uh, Coach Adam O'Brien from the Newcastle Knights talking about whether or not the Knights need to make some positional and staff changes. It's it's bigger than that. It's we need to find why. You know, we're 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 not the team that we were last year. Even though we had injuries last year, we've had them again this year. But we were we were. A, excited by our footy so you know there'll be some stuff for me lying in and around that too so we just we'll have a conversation about it tomorrow and see if we can find some solutions to get excited about this season because it's not gone yet but we need to start making some decisions on what we want to get out of it okay boys uh do you think hoops let me start with you do you uh, do you hear is adam o'neill under any adam o'brien under any pressure no, he's not under any pressure, Anthony. I think he only re-signed. He got a contract extension uh, over the course of the off-season because he was being repeatedly linked with the Melbourne Storm where he spent 10 years uh, as an assistant to Craig Bellamy. And we now know that Craig will be the head coach at the Melbourne Storm again next year in 2022. But at that stage, uh, Adam was being suggested as a possible replacement. So, no, he's not under any pressure. But there's no doubt, to Gordy's point from a minute ago, there are some cracks there and... I don't have the answers, but Gordon's right. It seems to be that unless Kalen and, and Mitchell Pearce are on song and firing, then, you know, Tyson Frizzell was brought to the club to, to stiffen up the forward pack. It was David Clemmer prior to that. Um, Jaden Braley's a good young hooker. So it, it, it seems as though everything's in place. And they had success last year because they made the finals for the first time uh, in a number of seasons. But... It's not happening this year. The thing is, and I think this is what Adam O'Brien was talking about last night, they can't handle uh, any adversity at the moment, the night. As soon as a, a team starts to roll through them a little bit, there's nobody in the side at the moment who, who says, come on, boys, let's just stiffen up our defence a little bit and, and gets a little bit of mongrel and, and goes back at the opposition. They, they, mm. they become very submissive. Uh, the way they play the game, they just allow the game to come to them. And all this, this is stuff that should be innate in professional footballers. But the Knights are trying to find it. That When they've got players like Mitch, Mitchell Pearce there who can actually articulate it and talk and says the right things and, and can bond the team together on the field, they go okay. But there's just, they just, there's no resiliency in their defence whatsoever. So once you start to get a bit of a roll, it's almost like they're just, they've are just they got this passive defence that just allows the, the, the teams to keep coming at them and they just start retreating up the field as the defence comes forward, as the attack comes forward. And they've got, there's nobody in the team saying, look, we need to turn this around. The, That's the, David Clemmer's job. That's David Clemmer and Tyson Frizzell's job. It's simple as that. They've both played at the highest level. And then you get a rare kid that'll come along and set a standard, like a young Tino or whatever, and you get the young Sam Burgess when they go to South. There's, there's some special young kids that come along and they set a standard. 
But most of the time, Paul, when I played, and f for the life of me, it's your front rowers, it's your senior guys, it's your hard-headed guys that are no-nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. And when you look at the night side and you're reading through, they're the two guys that I'd be looking for. Even if I was playing and I'm going to lead, I'd be looking for those two guys to be right beside me, or if not in front of me a little bit. Yeah. And, and do you think they're providing that? No. And that's what we're looking at. So when the chips are down and all those young kids, and that's what Brisbane and the Cowboys and the Dogs, they're looking for that old guy that's just got no nonsense, that does his job week in, week out, that sets a standard that you guys get embarrassed if you don't go with him. And there's no one at Newcastle embarrassing their teammates beside them and saying, you've got to come with me. I'm going to go this hard and go that way, and you guys are going to come with me. And that's what they're lacking. Yeah, The, the Knights, to me, are a team... Uh, who are too busy enjoying the spoils of being an NRL player uh, in a one-team town. Yes. And aren't, aren't really willing to, like the Broncos have been in the past couple of years. They went around and they you know, they, they got the free entry into the nightclubs and they got all the pats on the back and all the, all the people wanting the selfies and all that. Uh, and they, they're living on the fat of, of the people who have been there before and got the job done before. But they're not doing it themselves, and they don't. Yeah. They don't seem prepared to sacrifice to get there. They seem quite content the fact that they're playing NRL. They don't want to win at NRL because they're happy playing NRL, and that's that's the mentality at Newcastle at the moment. And which Newcastle was always the opposite. They were a team. They fought for every bone. That, that's what you know. The toughness and tomorrows. Yeah. That's what Newcastle was always about. And and no matter where they were, you'd go to Newcastle. It was a beat up. Yeah. You had to check yourself in. I don't care. Where they were on the mm. table, you'd go to Newcastle without the Johns boys. You'd mm. go there, and you knew you were in a battle. Yeah, and, and I'd the, love to challenge anybody that's gone to Newcastle. Go, hey guys, you have to check yourself in today. Trent Robinson actually acknowledged that last night after the game. He, he said that he spoke to his players about honouring the fact that they're going to a rugby league town where people know what good footballers look like, and yes. where you've got to put in a good performance to get the result. So he he drilled that into his team. Paying respect to Newcastle and what Newcastle have done in all, all, all yeah, in the history of the club, and yet the, the Newcastle players themselves were the ones that couldn't live up to it. Hey, Paul, Genius this whole thing about actually, I might save it for the BS. I'm going to save that to the BS. Hoops. I was just saying to Kenny's point there, it's genius reverse psychology from Robbo to tap into the fact that you know, Newcastle's a blue-collar town. It's been born and raised on rugby league, and they know their football. And so he's used that as a motivation to get his side, who were depleted, down on troops, had every reason not to show up last night. They've got an 18-year-old halfback who's completely kicked the door off the hinges. I think he had five try assists. Four. Um, mm. And a try. I just, no, I just checked yeah. the numbers. I think it was five. Because yeah, oh, he, cause he set the last too. one up for Josh Morris, too. High five. So, yeah, he's a, <laughs> he, 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 what a special talent he looks. Um, yeah. But, yeah, they're, they're, it's a, there's some problems there with at the Knights at the moment. You can see it. From an outside point of view, I don't know exactly what they are, but certainly you look at that roster. There's representative players all throughout that side and some of the best emerging young talent in the game, i.e. Bradman Best, in the Senate, so I thought the Roosters did a terrific job of and they're containing learning bad habits. last night. They're learning bad habits already. And well, how do you fix that? Well, 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 you've got to put it on the senior players. The, the senior players should be... They, they, the one thing the senior players should be teaching the young kids is the standards you've got to reach every week to play in the NRL and the fact that, uh, firstly, you just never quit. You never surrender. Uh, and, and the Knights aren't doing that. So the, these kids are... Yeah, the worst thing that can happen to a, a young footballer coming through is to get comfortable with losing. Because generally when they're coming through young, it's because they're high achievers, they've had successful junior careers. And if they come into a, a bad organisation where the senior players are far too comfortable with losing, then what ends up happening is the players sort of just rubs becomes off. The on, norm. Yeah, it becomes well, it becomes, it becomes acceptable. acceptable. Yeah. And once it becomes acceptable... Then you, then that's difficult because then you got to try and change it. So Adam O'Brien's got this job now where he's got to go and say, you know what, let's, we we need to turn some things over here because we don't want Brad and Best learning bad habits of senior players who are, as I said, happy just to be NRL players, happy to I be the big with a dog guy in the like town. I played Andrew G, right, and he never won anything, but at training he'd come last. He and Petro would come last, and you get into a game and it's tough, and the tougher the game. He would tell you to get out of the road. 
Mm. And when the other sides, you know, like they're barring up and they're coming and they're charging at you and they're hitting you with everything, he'd tell you to get out of the road. So mm. I'm tougher than you. I'm going to take this run. So that was the standard that was set from Andrew G. That when you – and he wasn't making all the rep sides and there was Shane Webke and Lazarus and Petro and Thorne and all these guys. But he would be the one to say, I'm taking this hit up. So everybody was fighting to take that tough run. And that's the standard you set. That's what you want from your guys. That's what you want from your leader. And Andrew G, he never won anything at training, but he touched every line. A bit like the old Muhammad Ali. Mm. How many sit-ups you do? I don't know. I only started counting when it hurts. Mm. Yeah, mm. And that's what it is in a game. When it's hurting and you need to be tough and you need to be brave, you know, that's when those senior guys lead the way. In a, and it might be an action like that. It might be a hit-up. It might be a tackle. You know, it might even be giving away a penalty and taking on the bully. But, you know... They're the things that our game's lacking at the moment. Mm. And it's well, lacking not just Newcastle, it's lacking quite a few teams. Oh, the Tigers oh, mate, are exactly the same. The bottom eight. Mate, the bottom eight sides are lacking that. Mm. Yeah. Well, Can I, I do my BS now? Yeah, all right. like, uh, well, I, why, why not? Why not? Well, because I think it's come down to the sports scientists in our game. Like, I used to have to run eight and a half K, and, and it's not even mine. Like, mate, all the old guys, you just had to do what you had to do, and it was a mental toughness that, that come to your training. Now there's all these stories that, oh, you can't train. Tomorrow, because you've run 4K today and you don't know. So the players today look like Superman. They take off their shirts. They've all got the Instagram. They've all got the abs. Arthur Beats and all, guys I've played with, like Shane Webke, Glenn Lazarus, Andrew G, they didn't have abs, but they did They did tougher stuff than what these guys, the front rowers that come off today. Mm. Like there's a platform. I think the sports scientists have softened our game a little bit, and that's the resilience. That's that mental toughness part that you're not allowed to put in the players today, that you're not allowed to push them too far, you're not allowed to make them ask themselves questions, push themselves until they stop and beat that little guy on the shoulders that tells them to stop. Yeah. Can I just can I just add yes. to that? Yes. I, yeah, I spoke course. to Trent Robinson some years back uh, about the Roosters, who we all admire the way they're going about their business at the moment. And he was talking about the sports science and, and exactly what you just referred to there, Gordy. And he said, he said most, most clubs use this all this data to figure out when they've got to start saying to guys okay pull back he said and he said so when and he said the word he used he said when they start to overwork um he said mate we we use the data to make sure we don't underwork so they actually go beyond and they made themselves and he like some players he would push them deliberately into the zone where the the, the all the doctors are you know sports scientists going no, now's the time to stop he'd push them there deliberately and then he'd get a bit more out of them because he wanted to get, you know, he wanted to, to teach that mental toughness, which you can't do With by science. any other way than by you can't doing. Do science has comes from deep down, like rugby league science is coming deep down. And the things that we cherish are the guys that dig deeper than the other guys. Like Jonathan Thurston on a field, or Gutherson the other day, what was it? You know, he's the guy that runs 10 Ks. He's supposed to be the fittest guy. And they do these 2.0 K. There's no sports science in his performances mm. every week. Yeah. He runs 270 metres. He's on every ball. Billy Slater. Oh, mate, you got to stop because you've run four Ks. He runs 10 every game. Mm -hmm. So if you want a bloke to be a man on Sundays, he's got to be a man from Monday to Saturday. Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, I think that we're building little, you know, little children. And the sports scientists, like, get off your computer, soldier, mate. Too much, too much technology, mate. We ban it at our house. You got an hour on it, and then get off. It. <laughs> <laughs> and every and every player's got it. And you know what? And maybe they know too much about themselves. You know what? Like when I was, mate, when I was playing, they'd have an old-fashioned stopwatch. You didn't know whether you were making the time or not. They'd tell you that you made the time, or they told you that you missed the time. Yeah. Mate, you got another one. We, mate, we could have been making the time. Mm. There was no GPS. There was no watch. There was, you know, I mean, and we couldn't track ourselves. But we were getting told whether we were good or bad. And we had to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. Is you that make bad? There. No, I think that's a good hoops. And I don't want to be a dinosaur, you no. know, say, Bob, mate, back in my day, but I just think that the game can have a little bit of dinosaur and we're lacking that part of the mental toughness when something goes against you and you've got to do an extra effort. They can't do it because the scientists have told them that they can't. Yeah. Mm. Well, you, you have a not, day off. You're not being a dinosaur. We love the raging bull. But I, I will say this in terms of being a man on Sunday. Uh, Matt from Collaroy, long-time listener of the mm. program, has been in touch. <laughs> yeah. uh, Anthony, he's noted that you're up in the Brisbane studio. said, thank you, Anthony, for reaching out to Uncle Pat after you accidentally <laughs> broke his jaw with that mm. hairline fracture in the midst of a disagreement regarding a trivia question about the wombat's name in a country practice. That's right. He yeah. thought you called Auntie Helen Fatso. 
No. After not hearing the context of the comment correctly. He said he looks forward to eating the chocolates after they remove the wire in his jaw and also his cheekbone. He right. also appreciates the reading material. He didn't realise Rybald was still making hard copy magazines. <laughs> <laughs> he turns 92 uh, next week mm. and he'd love a visit. Yours yeah, in well, trivia, look, uh, Matt. As I said, he is an absolute pestosaurus. And what's his wife's name? She's the troublemaker. Helen. Was it Helen? Yeah. Or She's Fannigan. One of the two. She's Fannigan. No, that's that Auntie Helen. That's really Auntie got Helen. Two heads. Hang on. You've already insulted her once, so you're going to insult yeah. Auntie Helen again. Well, I was, I'm was. i glad you brought up Matt from Collaroy because I noticed that Buzz Rothfield wrote today that uh, Matty Johns, has ha- or, or Matt from Collaroy, uh, has, had, <laughs> has had surgery on his back to which he had to have strong painkillers. And no, he has got to have it. Have it. Like, he did you actually read it or did it. you just read the headline? No. Well, he would have he would have hated no, to have no, a strong he needs surgery. He he needs needs surgery Coleroy, yeah. He's been pushing through the pain barrier. In two weeks' time, mm. our mm. great leader Matt from Collaroy right. is going to have back surgery, and he won't miss a day. He's getting the strong, <laughs> no, the strong, the best players play hurt, Anthony. Yeah, yeah. See, mate, that's mm. what we're talking about. So there's no sports science mm. in Collaroy's house, right? Right. But I think he's catching one of those. What are they called? Those uh, those big home. Home vehicles, what are they called? Uh, Winnebago's. <laughs> Winnebago. Right. So, so he's coming up for the magic round to watch the football right. in a Winnebago because he can't fly, he can't sit. He's got to lay down ah. after surgery. Well, I, I'll, I hope his that's uncle's brave. okay and his Mate, auntie's okay. But most importantly, I hope his back's okay and he's okay with those strong painkillers. And good to know he's listening and we'll see him up here for magic round. <laughs> We're all coming up for magic round, aren't we? Yes. Well, you live here, don't you? So you'll be Yeah, I won't be coming up, Mm. but I'll certainly be here. Looking forward to it. All right. uh, Hoops, Kenty, Gordon Tallis, Maroon. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and talk about the Panthers game as Triple M rocks the footy. The Triple M Sunday Sinbin. Welcome back to it. It is the Sunday Sinbin on Triple M. And uh, very shortly, we will speak to uh, Isaiah Yo from the Panthers. We've got some fun coming up too. Some very interesting stuff in Maroon Confidential that involves a few of our own... uh, our own people today. We might even do a quiz, and if we do, the topic today will be entertainment, which I know you love, Hoops, kids' movies, which is right up your alley. Uh, Paul Kent, James Triceps Hooper, and Gordon Tallis. We've only got uh, a quick space here, but I thought, uh, Hoops, we might do that halfback update or halfback merry-go-round update because we hear Sean Johnson to the Broncos, then we hear Adam Reynolds, then we hear DCE to South. It's an absolute mad woman's breakfast at the moment. It is, yeah. There's a lot going on in that space. Look, in all likelihood, Anthony, I think Adam Reynolds will go and sign with the Cronulla Sharks. That'll be a a three-year arrangement beginning next season. That's what he always wanted out of the South Sydney Rabbitohs. They didn't want to budge on the 12-month offer that they put forward and then wanted to assess it on a year-by-year basis. Uh, Yes, the Broncos are going to come in with the red carpet and um, Kevy Waldles will make his pitch. The new CEO, Dave Donaghy, will also be on board, but I don't think um, I think it's too little, too late. Uh, I think that Craig Fitzgibbon, the new Cronulla coach, is already a long way down the track in terms of negotiations with Adam at the Parramatta Reels, the Mitchell Moses situation. He's meant to give them an answer by round ten, which is obviously the clock's ticking there because we've nearly finished round eight. Uh, so he hasn't got that much longer to let Parramatta know what he's doing. I don't think he'll go anywhere, even if that deadline does elapse. Uh, and he essentially just does become a free agent for next year and beyond. I, I think Mitchell, you look at that performance from him and the team last night, they're now a top four side. They're flying. He's got a great uh, playing rapport and also off-field uh, relationship with players like Clint Gutherson and some of the other big guns at the Eels. So I, I think Mitchell will stay in blue and gold. The Eels have been smart about how they've tried to handle this negotiation. I think they've tried to incentivise the deal with respect to if they are to make a grand final, which is what every club's aspiring to do, then Mitchell gets a bonus if they do that. If they were to win a grand final in terms of the new contract that they're pushing forward, then Mitchell would get a further bonus as a result of taking the Eels to their first title since 1986. So I think it's a smart play, and I think in all likelihood he'll remain in blue and gold. Sean Johnson's the unknown, Anthony. He's obviously with the Sharks At the moment, I think the Broncos uh, will also come into the picture there and then he's going to have a decision to make. There's an article in the paper today as well where Michael Cech is pushing him possibly over to Japanese rugby. So uh, he has got a couple of different options on the table. Mm. Okay, well, that's an interesting one. Japanese rugby. Boys, we might take a break because we don't want to keep him uh, waiting any longer. Uh, Isaiah from the Panthers to talk about that 
wonderful run that's seen them lose one regular season game since June last year. The Panthers had another win yesterday. And we'll speak to Isaiah very shortly as Triple M rocks the footy. The Triple M Sunday Sinbin. Triple M rocks footy. This is the Sunday Sinbin. Paul Kent from NRL 360. James Triceps Hooper, who looks like he's been doing a bit of work on the old biceps recently. By geez, you, you left that dr- shirt in the dryer a little bit too long, didn't you? Mate, I that wouldn't is be throwing stones tightest. about shirts if I was you. That is tight. And That's so nice. to he's got a bit of linen on today, yeah, Maroon. It's quite Mate, warm. you gotta dress up in Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gordon Tallis, too, in the Gordon Tallis studio in the beautiful city of Brisbane. We're going to speak to Isaiah Yo now, boys. Before we do, just a quick look at the ladder because, of course, uh, the Mighty Panthers up there in first and equal second. Then you have uh, the Rabbitohs and the Parramatta Eels. Then the Roosters and Storm. Then a four-point buffer to the Dragons on eight. But the Dragons, of course, have a game today. Titans on six, Warriors on six. So we'll just take a look at the eight. And eight wins from eight starts to start, to start 2021 Isaiah Yo, welcome to the Sunday Sinbin. Thank you for having me. And congratulations, mate, on the start of the year. I, I was just saying to the boys earlier on, you've got a game coming up against the Bunnies in your hometown of Dubbo in the next couple of weeks. That that'll be must be massive for a bloke like you or someone like Matty Burton. You know, exactly right. It's um I guess when you when you get to go to Bathurst, that's obviously nice, but to sort of go an extra couple of hours to where, where it all started. Uh, for both myself and Matty Burton, it's um, no, look, look, really looking forward to it. And it's obviously, um, it's a really quality game that they're taking out there. Obviously, Rabbitohs are flying high at the minute and, and, and we're in pretty good form ourselves. So it's, um, yeah, no, look, I, you, you sort of grow up. Uh, every now and then you might get a city country game out there or a trial. And um, I still remember how excited I was for that. So to get, an, to get a game like they've sort of set up uh, in about three weeks' time, it's uh, something I'm really looking forward to. Isaiah, hey, mate, um, you've, you've had a great start to the season and it's carried on from the, the way you performed so well last year. Maroon said in the intro there, one, one regular season loss since June. Do you guys actually talk about the prospect of, of or the potential of going through undefeated? No, it's, it's not something that's spoken about and I, I think we've done a good job of um, sort of picking out little things from every game that we need to learn on and I think that's something we did really well last year. I think we we're constantly learning from games, even even though we we're winning. And I think that sort of trickled onto this year. So um, I guess it's the old cliche, but it's something that really rings true for our club and, and with Ivan sort of as our coach. It's, it's one week at a time, and every week there's some some things to fix or, or to learn from. And it's just something we're doing really well at the minute. So um, yeah, rugby league's a funny game. A lot can happen, and a lot can change in a couple of weeks. So I think we understand that. And um, yeah, you, you never get sick of winning, so you don't want to take these moments for granted, that's for sure. The other thing on that, though, too, is because you, like, there's been a lot of talk about the new rules and, and the injury toll it's, it's had on teams. And we look at the Roosters again last night, and it sparked some debate about whether, that, yeah, whether the rules need to be changed because of, of the carnage it's causing. But then you look at you blokes, who essentially you, you had very little change for, for a year now. Yeah, I think that's um, obviously with the Roosters last night. It bra- breaks your heart to see some of the injuries that went on there. But I think as a as a group, we've done well. Um, I think our performance, our head of performance, Aiden Niles and his staff, do a good job of getting us fit. But we're a young side and um, full of energy. And I think these these rules sort of suit us to a T. To be fair, so um, you just look you look at our, the players we've got. Um, everyone's fit and mobile. And and, and I think yeah, the, the way the rules are going at the minute, the game's speeding up. I, I think it just suits us so well. So. Um, I think we've handled it well, um, and I obviously hope they don't change it back. It's um, yeah, I think it yeah, it, it fits our team team really well. Isaiah, I think everybody loves watching the Panthers attack. There's that much punch and flair and a hell of a lot going on, and it's genuinely exciting and, and entertaining football. But I think what's gone a little bit unsung so far uh, this season is the fact you've only let 60 points in over the course of the opening eight rounds of the competition. I imagine that your coaching staff would be really banging the drum about how impressed they are uh, about the wall that the Panthers have built in terms of the club's defence. Yeah, that's obviously Cameron Serrato in charge of that and it's something he, he takes a lot of pride in. Um, I thought if you sort of just look even at the game uh, yesterday, I, it was, we obviously weren't at our best, but I thought the way we were, we were able to defend our try line um, I think there was about a four or five set period there where we just had to keep turning them away and, uh, and they ended up coming up with an error. It's, it's obviously something we pride ourselves on and, and I think our attack and defence sort of go hand in hand. Um, our defence, 
uh, it, it can help us win the field position battle. So all of a sudden we're having more attacking sets and, and obviously we've got the players there that can score points and little mismatches across the field that we, we seem to be taking advantage of at the minute. So, um, yeah, look, it, it, they both work well together, attack and defence. But, uh, yeah, no, look, it's something we pride ourselves on. You don't want to let each other down in the line and, and I think we're doing that, um, yeah, pretty well at the minute. Yeah, that's from a team's point of view. But personally, I think you've taken your game to another level. Um, obviously, everybody wants to play state of origin. Was that one of your goals at the beginning of the year? Yeah, I guess getting a taste of it last year, it's, it's something you want to be a part of um, again and again. But I, I guess it all start, starts from, from club land and um, obviously doing your role for the team and obviously your team having success as well. That, that obviously that probably put me in the frame of it last year that the team played so well. Um, for the whole season, and that sort of boosts you up into the little contentions like that. So, um, look, it'd be nice too, but uh, yeah, I, I understand that you need to be playing well at club land, and, and your team needs to be playing well. So, look, that's my priority. It, it's still a month away, so a lot can happen between now and then. And, and I'm in a position where um, I think that's probably where New South Wales is really strong depth-wise at that sort of lock uh, middle position. So, um, look, we'll see what happens over the next month. It's, it'd obviously be nice too, but uh, there's a fair bit to do between now and then. Mate, what about the boy band brothers? Uh, you lost Josh Mansour last year, and I thought he, like, he used to help out the forward so much, just getting you guys on the front foot. But Brian Toto has been absolutely outstanding, and again yesterday. Yeah, look, he runs for 200 metres, like it's <laughs> yeah for fun. To be fair, like it's it, it's phenomenal for us. I think there was a period there in the second half where we were we were struggling a little bit in the middle, and he, he took I think play one and three, um, and yeah, just incredible for us. He he can do that hard stuff. Um, coming out of yardage and all that sort of stuff, but then at the same time, he's, he's a try scorer as well. He's um, mm. look, he's taking his game to another level. He's um, he's done himself right in um, in the position for an Origin start, I'd imagine. But look, he, yeah, it definitely doesn't go unnoticed with our team, particularly with losing Joshy Mansell there. He's um, he's taken that with both hands, and look, he's, he's probably been our best player all year. To be fair, he's obviously he, he's not the one uh, setting up all the try assists and everything like that. But dude, he gets us out of our end well, and he's just incredibly important for us. What about what about your music taste? Being a kid from the Dubbo, uh, from from Dubbo, you'd sort of remind me a bit of Shane Webke. And every time there was a bit of rap music or pop on the radio or on the jukebox, you'd turn it over to a bit of country. Yeah, well, I don't get that say in this team. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, a lot of a lot of Mount Druitt songs at the minute, so they try and get me to sing along, but uh, not so much. Um, I just let them do their thing, and uh, yeah, no, that's it's not my taste. I can't imagine me playing it when I'm 50 years old. That's for sure. Can't, can't imagine anyone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, well, uh, <laughs> just take us through Nathan Cleary at the moment. It, it must be such a pleasure to have a player so in com, com, command of his game at the moment. Yeah, it is, and obviously, what you're seeing is the, the final product on the field. But what he does from Monday to Friday, Monday to Thursday, whenever you're playing, it's um, He'd be, the, he'd be the last on the field by an hour, uh, and then he goes and studies. He, he's in the club the longest, and um, yeah, and on top of that is just the ultimate com, ultimate competitor. He's uh, look, he's been tremendous for us. He, he's leading us around, um, whether it be try assists or, or taking the line on or his kicking game, getting us out of trouble. It, it just seems that whatever the team needs at, the, at that time, he seems to be doing it mm. um, at, at sort of the highest class. So. Look, he, he was doing it last year, and, and I think he's only getting better this year. It's, um, yeah, no, I'm very happy that he's our seven and he's the one leading us around, that's for sure. And his balance to that is so uh, spot on, isn't it? You see some halves, they, they, they're either... Mitch Moses talks about it a lot, for example. You're either concentrating on the, the running game or the, the game management, and it, it, a lot of halves, it's all, almost one or the other. But Nathan, he, he just gets you guys around the park so well but he's also so dangerous because he's such a, a tremendous running threat. Yeah, exactly right. He, he just knows what we need at that at that moment. And look, that's something he's done for the last 18 months, probably this whole year, particularly that game management. He's, that's something he's always been good at, I think. Um, but yeah, sort of as he's got more games under his belt and become more experienced, his ability to take the line on, know when to pass, know when to run, knowing what pass to give it at each moment. Um, yeah, look, it's, it's just ultimate class and, Look, he, he was probably the best player last year. He didn't get the Dal Yam, but I think it was probably just because a lot of the boys in our team would, took a few points off him at the back end of the year. But, uh, look, he, he'd be there again, or thereabouts again this season. Um, yeah, look, he's just outstanding. He, like I said, he just knows when to, what, what we need at each moment, and he, he's doing that well. Mm. Hey, mate, before we let you go, this uh, current uh, interchange bench for the Panthers, 
uh, blokes like Lee New May, Eisenhuth, obviously Liam Martin, these blokes had walked straight in to a spot in most other sides. Yeah, exactly right. I think if you look at Liam Martin, he was, I think he was a couple of positions off maybe from being in the, the State of Origin squad at the back end of the year. Mm. Tyrone May's versatility is phenomenal. And then obviously Spencer Lanou and, and Matty Eisenhuth. Uh, Matty Eisenhuth was starting lock for the Tigers last year at the back end. And uh, Spencer Lanou, obviously young, but coming through. And look, he, he's been outstanding for us. So look, we're, we're lucky. It doesn't just stop there. We've got incredible depth um, into our New South Wales Cup side. So they haven't been beaten yet either. So look, it's so obviously, it's a good feeling around the, the group at the moment, not just the top 17 in NRL, but the, the top 30 uh, in the squad. So um, everything's going well at the minute. And, um, yeah, particularly those four boys, they're adding a bit of punch for us um, at sort of the back end of each half there, which is really nice. Good on you, mate. Good to catch up with you, Isaiah. Thanks, boys. Thank you for having me, Tart. There he is, mate. The co-captain of the uh, Good On You, Mate, Penrith uh, Panthers. Isaiah Yo joining us on the Sunday Sinbin with Hoops, Paul Kent, Gordy Tallis and Maroon. We're going to take uh, a break. Now, when we come back, the thing everybody's talking about at the moment is the conference system. I know Paul's had plenty to say about it. We'll get his thoughts. We'll get Hoops. We'll get Gordy Tallis to weigh in. Where do you guys lie on the conference system? We're going to find out more about that shortly as Triple M rocks the footy. The Triple M Sunday Sinbin. Welcome back to it. It is, of course, the Sunday Sinbin. Sin bin here at Triple M. It's been a massive weekend of rugby league. A couple of floggings and for tyre power, uh, if you miss the scores, here they are. South 34, Canberra 20, Melbourne 40, Cronulla 14, Broncos 36, Titans 28, uh, Panthers 28, Manly 16, Parramatta 32, Dogs 10, Roosters 38 beat the Knights 4 and those scores are always thanks to our mates at Tyre Power. We've got Gordon Tallis, uh, we've got Paul Kemp, we've got James Hooper. I'm going straight to you. You've got your hand up. Yeah, there's a little bit of breaking news, Anthony. Uh, rotten luck for the Sydney Roosters. Brett Morris uh, and also Lindsay Collins have had those MRI scans this morning and the worst fears have been confirmed. They've both done... Uh, ACL injuries. They will both be out for the remainder of this season in all likelihood. Uh, very sad circumstances for Brett Morris, but that will probably be the last time that we see the great Beamors uh, on the NRL stage. So yeah, everybody in the game is thinking about Brett at the moment. Uh, he's an absolute champion uh, and I'm sure that everyone at the Sydney Roosters will be getting around him and giving him all the support that he needs over the course of the coming days and weeks. Absolutely, and an absolute end of an era there, and uh, we wish him all the very best over the next month or so, and no doubt he'll pop up in a role with the NRL. He might even pop up here at Triple M, who knows? But look, boys, right now we're going to talk about this uh, conference system. Um, Before I go to uh, get your thoughts, in particular, Paul here, I want to play you some audio of uh, the boss of the NRL, Peter Volandis, on NRL 360. I don't know how people are getting the detail because there is no detail. It was just looking at a possible two conference with 18 teams. I've seen detail today in some of the media that I've never seen before. So, look, you you can't stand still whatever your product is. And as I've said from day one, I will consider the fan, I will consider our customer and uh, and deliver it for the fans. And it's by no means a fait accompli. It's an idea that will require analysis, it will require feedback, and as we go around to the 16 clubs, we're seeking that feedback and if it was to happen it's at least four years away at the minimum yeah well that why i wanted to play that up first there kenty uh is because um uh, peter valenti says he doesn't know where people are getting the detail and the first criticism people have of this if they have the detail right is that they think that there could not be a local derby grand final e.g Parramatta, penrith south's roosters so that's not set in stone Either it is the conference system, but your issue in particular was uh, whether or not we have enough NRL quality players to fill another one or two teams. Oh, look, Anthony, there's a whole lot of hairs on this. And, and I like what I heard from Peter Vlandis about uh, the fact that they're going to really go in depth with this and just really determine whether it's worth pursuing. And then uh, they'll take a lot of feedback. If it is worth pursuing, then to, to see how it actually is going to shape up. The, the idea of a, a conference where the two conference champions then come together in, the, in a Super Bowl type format, I think is ridiculous. I, I hate the idea. I think, you know, if you look at the, uh, the 1980s, for example, the two dominant teams in the competition, I know it was primarily a Sydney competition then, but the two dominant teams of the A's were Parramatta and Canterbury. And, and I'd hate to start a season where you already knew they couldn't play off in the, in the title decider at the end of the year because they come from the same conference. If you look at the 90s, the two dominant teams of the 90s were the Broncos and the Raiders. 
again. They would be the outer Sydney Conference. And I'd hate to see us start a season knowing that they couldn't play in a grand final. So I think that idea of a Super Bowl format where the, the conference champions are brought together, I, I, I don't like it anyway. Um, but the idea, in some ways, I think a conference system is almost inevitable because the game, if the game is going to grow and continue to expand and, and we have more and more teams, then it's almost, uh, I suppose, it's almost impossible to just have a fair competition uh, one and a half rounds and just where it just keeps getting bigger because you, you, you're eventually going to get teams that don't play each other uh, very much at all. And, and, and we don't need to go down that route. So I think at some point the conference makes sense. We almost need uh, some crossover. There's a, you, you need teams playing within conferences and swapping conferences while they stay there, but they, uh, they have that crossover where we have right now. But if you almost look at the competition now, most teams... For example, Penrith, the, the eight the eight Sydney clubs, Penrith, Penrith played the other seven twice already. Yeah, it's, and a lot of teams get those those rivalries, those local derbies already in the in the draw. So we're already doing a lot of that. So there is a lot of talk about it. It's not a new idea for the game, but there's yeah, there's it's created a lot of debate. A lot of people are for it. A lot of people dead set against it. And as far as the depth in in the competition, it's been really the new rules have really. I think illustrated the the difference in in playing strengths of, of certain clubs, and what that's allowed is that the good teams have got better, the the bad teams have got worse. So that divide between Team One and Team Sixteen now is bigger than it's ever, well, not ever been, but it's bigger than it's been for some time, and that's part of the new rules. Now I think the new rules are actually fairer, and are actually have exposed the fact that the old rules kept the teams closer together almost artificially. But there is concern among the coaches, particularly, that there's not enough depth to go around and there's not going to be enough high-quality players to draw upon. And you get players who normally would be uh, reserve graders or state cup players who will now play first grade. And that's a legitimate, that's a legitimate complaint. Because that, and that's almost inevitable when you, when you expand in any competition because you've got to take weaker players into your competition to make the numbers. But, but eventually, the game has got to, and this is the other part to it, in the same week that this conference system broke, we also had Noel Cleal come out and say he's never seen bush football in a worse state. And we're seeing, you know, like my old football club up the Central Coast is not fielding a first grade team this year, just simply because of yeah. the, the dying of bush footy. And, and, and there's a whole multitude of reasons for that. And it's happening all around the country in New South Wales and Queensland. But we, the game needs to start fighting back against the AFL and start getting players and participation numbers. Forget all this elite academy stuff. They've already got the elite players. They need to get participation and they need to spread the tentacles wider and get more kids who are not playing rugby league, who are playing other sports, get them back playing rugby league like they all did 30, 40 years ago when it was basically the only game you played in the bush with maybe a bit of rugby on the Saturday. So that's if we can fix that, then you'll fix ultimately you'll you'll fix the depth problem at the highest level, mm. because you'll have more players coming through. And and Paul, just on the conference system, right? If it's Sydney based and New South Wales, oh sorry, New South Wales based and the rest. Well, Sydney well, based and the rest, yeah. Yeah, right. So how's that fair on Melbourne flying every week to either towns or which would be their longest flight or New Zealand? And those sides catch a bus or drive their own car to games for the it's not, sixteen it's rounds not, or whatever. It's not fair, Gordon, in that no, respect. See, so, uh, but I will I say, Melbourne already, Melbourne fair. already got to travel every second week. They play a home game, and then they're already tra- Cowboys they travel. Cowboys travel every Sydney, second week, or flying up to North Queensland to Brisbane. Well, or whatever. I get, just, I get that, yeah. mate. I, I get that. It, it takes out one of their shorter trips, but they are still travelling nearly every week. And, and Gordon, that's that has been raised. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's. It's a viable complaint or concern from the, those clubs that how much travelling they'll be doing because the one thing that we do know, and we saw this last season, is the teams that did the most travel last year under the bubble really started to, and, and I put the Canberra Raiders in this, they really started to show signs of fatigue towards the end of the season, whereas a team like Melbourne, who were all based on, on the Sunshine Coast and playing all their games out of, out of Brisbane... Uh, and well, ultimately, they started playing the home games on on the Sunshine Coast. They actually talked about how refreshed they felt because they weren't doing as much travelling yeah. as they had in other years. And that's always been one of the, the worries about the Warriors is the, the, the toll it takes travelling a four-hour flight to, to Australia 
every second week. And did you say it on television the other night, Paul? So if I'm following either conference, why would I turn on and watch the other conference if my team's playing in this? I, I think but that's if a they're comp- playing in yeah. the same competition, you will mm. turn on. So for ratings, I think it's Paul. And let me tell you, South Sydney, Dragons, Parramatta, Bulldogs, they pull big up here in Brisbane. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of yeah. fans up here that don't follow the Broncos that want to go watch South Sydney or go watch those traditional clubs that – You know, when we were watching our Brisbane competition, we always had two teams. You had a team in Sydney um, in the New South Wales competition. You had a team in the Queensland competition. And that's how it worked. Yeah. And that's what we're going to lose. Yeah. And those, you know, and then that's that's something that we've got to look at. And just, I don't get why it's it's the club's jobs. Like, they go get a lot of country footballers and probably not as much now. And they pull them out of all the country areas. They have to go back there and play games. I think that they should be assigned an area and they have to play two games there, whether it's a trial match and take a team there and it might be your lowest drawing, you know, game, you know, um, and it could be, you know, when you play the Warriors, you don't get a big crowd or Raiders or whatever because their fans don't travel. Mm. You have to take it to the country. You have to go out there and give back to the bush footy. And if we don't start making clubs do that, you know, and the reason why I fell in love with the game is guys like Wally Lewis and G-Miles, they come up and played in Townsville when I was eight. Parramatta come up and played, I think, in 98, mate, when I was 15. They played the Broncos. I would see my stars in the hometown, and we had no competition. The Broncos just come into the comp, but we would see our stars coming up to our hometown in Townsville before the Cowboys. This is 10 years before the Cowboys and playing games of rugby league. That's why I fell in love, because I could touch my heroes. Yeah. Well, thankfully so far, Gordon Peter Valandis has proven that he's a can-do operator. And mm-hmm. there was a, he's also an a article, listener. He's there shown was a, he's a there listener. Was the, 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 there was an article this week on the back of Noel Cleal coming out and saying he's never seen bush football in a worse state in 50 years, that the NRL is going... Like, for, for how many years, Kenty, have we spoken about, oh, a plan to save the bush, and we're going to give back to the bush, and we're going to do this for the bush. And in reality, the majority of it is always lip service. Yes, there's is. a couple of token games here and there, but there hasn't actually been a proper blueprint, long-term plan, strategy put in place and followed through. I, I think with this NRL administration... They're, they're not going to just sit there and talk about it and make it look good in a presentation. They will actually follow through with it. So the, the proof will be so in, in how it fair, unfolds over the next couple of years. Yeah, I love your, your the idea there. Year. Well, that was exactly but what that's, was that's, spoken about during the week yeah, that's and not, exactly what they want to try and implement. That, I think it's a great idea, but I don't think it's going to – that's not going to fix bush football. Bush football needs more funding. And and in some cases, the, that's a, the, that's part yeah. of it though. But, in but some, that's yeah. funding that when but you that go there, that wouldn't that wouldn't that boost the junior rugby league? Wouldn't that help if they have a dinner and well, then you know all the players it, go out to yeah, those clubs I, and they I put on I get all that, but and, they're yeah. they're band aid solutions. They're, well, they're quick fixes that give, give it they're like sugar bursts. You know what I mean? You, you have your little yeah. sugar burst and then it ends. The the problem, like if you want, the problem with the bush is what's happened is, and the bush clubs. Many of them are almost to blame because there's this that they cannibalise each other. So within the bush football competitions themselves, you have the, the haves and the haves not clubs, and the clubs that are that are travelling well will go and pilfer the, the poorer clubs. And in some ways, they, they're responsible for their own downfall because in their little arms race out in you know in, in the Central Coast competition or in Group Two or Group Six, the top clubs are, are always rummaging through and taking the best talent out of the, uh, out of the less financial clubs and they cause that they cause that big imbalance they make it harder for those lesser clubs the, the NRL's got a I know in in the AFL in, in a lot of bush areas in the AFL they have a point system as far as player talent so that way it's not it's not, not a salary cap because there's such a disparity there but what it does it makes makes the talent spread uh, happen because clubs have a points total that they're allowed to, to get up to, and then they're not allowed to recruit beyond that. So it's, it's like a salary cap, but as far as points go. Now, I think that can things like that can work because we need to spread the talent and stop the rich clubs bashing up the poorer clubs in bush football. And then we need the NRL to get out there and stop just ticking boxes and going in and flying into a town for a day, doing a coaching clinic, and say, right, you know, that's Canamble done for the year. And then moving yeah. on. They yeah. need to go out there with dedicated strategies to try and rebuild the game. And they need to make rugby league appealing. And it goes all the way up to the top level. And this is yeah. something the game is. This is why I think the NRL pushes so hard about this whole role model thing. Because that's where AFL stole a march on rugby league. 
in that they sold themselves as a game that mums would want their kids to play. And while they were doing that, rugby league was going through all sorts of atrocities off the field that made rugby league look a bit of a grubby game. And hey, mate, because, they the same guys. Dustin, the, Dustin Martin, their best player, has got tatties all over his neck. His father's I, I been allowed get in that. his country, and he told a lady that he wanted to stab her with chopsticks. I get oh, that, Gord. Nice. Yeah, yeah, look, lovely. Look, I'm not saying they are, they are pristine. <laughs> But I'm just saying that the rug, rugby cousin. league has got a rugby league has got to have a whole of game approach about yeah. rebuilding the game. When the last broadcast deal was done, and they got a massive pay rise, almost all that money went to the clubs and the players in the NRL. Very the 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 the, the, the grassroots funding got le, very little uh, upgrade. From the last broadcast, it was unacceptable, and the NRL, uh, yeah, they, they didn't like the criticism about it. They they defended themselves. They put out misinformation to defend themselves. But the fact was that uh, John Grant was being un he was under assault from the clubs, trying to get him removed from the commission. So he came out with his thirteen million dollar guarantee, which then got the clubs all back on side. And at the same time, Todd Greenberg, as the CEO, was under assault from the players. So he bumped up the salary cap, which suddenly made the players happy. And yeah, is, it's, uh, yeah. That, that's, what, that's what happened. And that's I, why all that money that should have been going into grassroots funding is not, now not going there. It comes back to clubs. But was, was there a case, because when I signed for the Dragons years ago, because I hadn't played for Queensland, there was no transfer fee. Was there a transfer fee there if used you to come be. from the bush? There used to be. There used to be. So then, so then that's simple to put that back. Like if... You know, if there's a young kid and he gets pulled out of Toowoomba or Townsville or whatever and he gets pulled into a system, you have to pay. So that means that you got to pick. You just can't go pick the eyes out of country football and get the kid to move to the city. So you got to pay. Is I think it might have been 15 grand back then. So say it's 30. So then that club or that organisation or that area has that money that yeah. when that kid doesn't make it, they can buy them back. To say, mate, you want to come back and captain coach? Because they've pulled you out of like You know what I mean? So it's like paying for the fruits that I, you're growing. I tell you what I'd like to see. I'd like to see, you know, I've spoken to various people about this over the years, but I would like to see the NRL adopt something similar to like a farm system in you in American baseball, whereby if you if you if you are drafted, for example, by the the the, the Yankees. Yankees they will put you in their farm system and bring you through. And, and those clubs be, almost belong to the, to the Yankees. I, I'd like a system whereby the NRL, where they, they, they allocate NRL teams to certain uh, regions or certain clubs. And if you want to come through that club, if you want to sign for the Roosters and you're playing out, at, for example, out at Orange, then you have to play for the Roosters club out at Orange and you have to come through that system. So what that does then is yeah. it encourages the Sydney clubs to invest in bush football. And by well, doing that, you're going to, you're going to strengthen bush football and the, you're going to make the NRL clubs responsible to yeah, improving but then every kid will want to go play for the, the Roosters in Orange and they'd be too strong. And if they're winning by 30 or 40 or 50, you know, that wouldn't be fair on the other guys. No, but what I'm saying, I'm system. saying, so, mate, oh, so you, every you might club have... club has a team in there. Every club. So, yeah, so wow. Orange Sims might be... Orange yep, Sims gotcha. might be with the yeah, Roosters. Good. Orange United yep. might be with Cronulla. Yep. Bathurst Penguin, well, Bathurst, they're, they're yep. now Bathurst Panthers. Yep. They're, they're already linked yep. to the Panthers. Right. So yeah, Oberon and, and Cowra, and all those teams would yeah. be linked to certain clubs. But Commissioner okay. Paul, I like it. What about? It's got a great ring. Paul, Commissioner <laughs> Paul. What about? I'll give you a little booster pillow yeah. so you can sit up there. And yeah. you can sit. <laughs> to close this off, though, boys, isn't oh, it? You can a, be my henchman. It, it's, a, it's a different <laughs> world we live in now. Where is it time? Is it time? We've sort of discussed something once years ago. Is it time, Paul and Hoops and Gordy, where these bigger regional centres, where rugby league was once the only kid in town, places like Wagga or places like maybe Tamworth, maybe places like Tweed Heads, maybe Lismore, these bigger regional centres, mm -hmm. should they be playing in some sort of a state competition with some of the sort of no, second-tier no, Sydney teams? No, 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 because what, what drives... What drives footy, Anthony, at that level is the tribalism. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what drives it. That's what gets. That's why people yeah. volunteer and do all this work for no pay for their teams because they just love their club. So you start saying to these teams, you you're now going to go into a state competition. It's no longer going to be your local team because it's got to be more of a regional team or whatever. There's not the passion there for those people to get out of bed and get up and go and mark the field in the morning. 
man the tuck shop all day, do those sorts of things. Yeah, and that's what, that's we, we, in this need for professionalism, that's what we're eliminating in the game. And all these people who love their, the, who love their club, who grew up loving their Rimba Magpies, who was, if not the oldest club in country football, was one of the oldest clubs in country football, and don't have a team this year. Because yeah, they just don't, they just did sad. not have the numbers. It's it's really sad, and and I know a lot of people who who did a lot of work for a lot of years and never got a cent from the club, yeah, never yeah. asked for a cent from the club. But that's how we run, because my, my old club. And we need to keep that. That's the only club I played ten years for. That's my favourite mm. cup, because mm. I went there in under eight. I left it under eight. And the people ask me, and all the other clubs like we played against Townsville Brothers, and I hate. I actually used to say, I dislike Brothers Townsville. More than New South Wales, mm, mm. and I actually do. Yeah, you know but, I mean? uh, <laughs> and that's great. That's great yeah. for the game. But, but, yeah, that, see, but that's the tribalism, tribalism you know exists. I mean? because, and then that's what exists in local footy, and that's what we got to make sure stays there. We I need to forget. keep that. But too many people yeah. come out from outside and try to interfere with it, and and meanwhile, within those competitions, the teams are eating each other, and there's not enough strong administrators to say, "Listen, guys, if you don't, if if you're allowed to keep doing this, you ain't gonna have a three team comp." Yeah, well, you. you know, my, my junior team, the Waterloo Waratahs, they come to me and said, look, can you come and can you host a function? You know what? And I said, God love them, but they just didn't have the budget. So I, I couldn't help them out. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, uh, we'll take uh, a, I don't know when he's joking. We'll take right a break. We'll come back. It's all about the folding. I tell and you what, we'll ask the question. One pocket's got green apples, the other's got pineapples. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll come back and ask the question, what is wrong with Canberra as Triple M rocks the footy? The Triple M Sunday Sin Bin. Triple M rocks footy. Back. It's the Sunday Sin Bin. We've got a uh, big game for you coming up at 4 o'clock across the Triple M network today. Dragons, Tigers. Well, you think the Dragons might win that one, but the boys will have plenty to say about that one. And Dan will call it for you later on this afternoon. It's 4 o'clock kickoff, that one. South 34, Canberra 20 so far. Melbourne 40, Cronulla 14. Broncos 36 over the Titans 28. Uh, Panthers beat Manly 28 16, Roosters 38, Knights 4, and another great win for Parramatta. 32 over the Dogs, 10. And, of course, boys, that's where Bryce Cartwright is now applying his trade with the Parramatta Reels. I believe we've got him on the line. Bryce Cartwright, welcome to the Sunday Sin Bin. Hey, boys. Thanks for having me. Nice to have you on. Nice to see you doing well again. And I'm, I, I assume for you, mate, it's probably just great to be back in Western Sydney. Yeah, mate. It's nice to be home, um, back, back where I grew up, so... And also nice to be winning some footy games. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a pretty good last month. Yeah, Bryce, congratulations on your return to form this year. But I want to ask, when you were going through some of those tough times over the course of the last couple of years, was there a point where you ever thought with the injuries and with all the other criticism and whatnot, you thought you might give it away? Or Yeah, uh, look, mate, it was pretty tough. You know, it was, you know, three sort of long years where I wasn't, you know, playing any good footy at all. And, um sort of all the external noise and all those kinds of things. But, you know, each each day I just I just kept putting my head down and working hard and, you know, I'm I'm starting to see a few rewards now and, you know, I'm in a in a great team and I've got some good people around me and I'm back at home so I uh, I'm in a really good place. Uh when you were when you were without a club, uh you went and trained with Spud Carroll, mate. Uh, did he help you along a bit? Yeah, mate, he um he bashed me around for about two months, so it was um, good fun down there in his gym. And, um, yeah, I got along real well with Spud. So, um, yeah, we trained pretty hard. And um, he, he got me in good shape for the preseason uh, coming into power. What has been – like, if you put it down there, Bryce, the the big difference, the big change that, that – or I suppose the awakening for you, what, what was it that sort of you figured out, this is what works for me and this is what I need to do? Uh, I think I think Brad plays a big part in that. He, he just sort of said to me, we had a real honest chat when I first came down. He said what he thought, you know, what, what I was good at and what I was bad at and the things that I need to work on. And he just said I didn't have to be the player that, you know, that does everything. I just need to do my job. There's, you know, Parramatta's got a, a lot of quality players and it's a really good team. So I just had to go out there and do my job and, you know, good things will happen off the back of that. Can I ask you, Bryce, when you were sort of having second thoughts about what was the best next step for you personally, uh, what kept you going in terms of wanting to play the game? Oh, probably definitely my children, mate. I just, you know, I wanted to make them proud. You know, even though they're really young, I just, when they grow up, I want them to know that, 
I, I never gave up and, you know, no matter what happened that they could say that their dad, you know, he, he kept fighting throughout, you know, those hard times and, you know, I didn't want to let them down or my family. Yeah, well, your form certainly uh, indicated that so far this season. What about the Eels? Tell us a little bit about uh, them as a club and why you're enjoying your football so much this season. Yeah, I love it there. It feels like I've been there for years, mate. Um, you know, I, I grew up with most of those boys, whether it was playing against them or playing with them in rep teams. And, you know, from the first day I got there, um, everyone from the staff to the players made me feel at home. And, you know, no one's put any pressure on me. They've just... They've just told me to go out and do my job, and you know they're not they're not expecting too much from me. They've just you know told me to do all the simple things right, and um, it's just it's a really happy place to be. And it mo- mo- must be nice, mate, sitting there at a club that's travelling so well. It's a, a, a certain finals threat, grand final threat. Like you, they're, they're going good places. The Eels, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. You know they've had a, a strong couple of last years, and you know we started off this year really well, and. You know, I, I sort of forgot what it felt like to win uh, for a while there. So it's, it's it's been nice winning some footy games. And, you know, it's I forget how good it is coming into a Monday video session uh, coming off a win. Mm. Must be. Just take us into your training with Spud. Because <laughs> he's got the world's smallest <laughs> boxing ring. Okay. And the mate, like, you, mate, you put a telephone in there, you start making calls. Like, <laughs> how, do you, how did you go when he got you in the ring? Because, it, look, look, it's not a big ring, is it? Yeah, no, nah, there's, no, there's no hiding from him in there. You have to uh, cop a few punches. So, mm. you know, we stepped in there yeah, every day I was there. And um, it was pretty old school, the training, just, just roller boxing, um, you know, a lot of push-ups, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, he really took it back to the old school old school way. Did he try and hit you in the head with that empty keg that he gets you to do push-ups and then lift it up <laughs> over your head and all that sort of thing? Yeah, we're doing that every day and he, he, he wouldn't stop letting me know how good he was at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's him. That's him. That sounds like when we train there. The other thing he does too is he, he goes, mate, let's just get in the ring and like Spud out, out, outweighs me probably by about 30 kilos, right? So he, yeah. he says, mate, we'll get in the ring, we'll do some body sparring. So already you're, in, you're terrified and, and but he inevitably... Inevitably, clips around the chin. <laughs> Always. Oh, sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. And just moves on. Like you get, got, you got little birds whistling in your head, and he's just apologising, <laughs> telling you to keep going. Did, did, did you get? Yeah. You're lucky. You'd be taller than him, wouldn't you? Yeah, oh, yeah. We're about the same height, but yeah, no, he wasn't going easy on me. That's for sure. There's no in between him with him. <laughs> hey, on the footy front, uh, Bryce, any update on your teammate from last night? There were some real concerns when Nathan Brown came from the field, and he's such an integral part of everything that Parramatta does. But I think there was a little bit of good news today, wasn't there, that it isn't long term, and it's certainly not his ACL. Yeah, no, uh, it was pretty scary when we first seen him go down, but um, thankfully enough, it was just um, his hip pointer and. Uh, yeah, I've seen him at recovery this morning and he was walking around fine. So uh, the scan's come up all clear, I think. And um, I think he, sh- he should be good to go. And maybe this week we'll see how he goes. But he was walking pretty good today. So, um, yeah, just thankful enough it's, it wasn't anything serious. Mate, what about, I don't know if the boys have, have covered off on this. Obviously, you got a lifeline there from Parramatta and you're playing the best football that you've played in years. What's the future hold for you, mate? Are you tied down there for long? Uh, I signed a one-year deal, so um, hopefully, you know, I can just keep playing some good footy and, you know, I'd love to stay at Para. Um, You know, they, they took a chance on me and, um, all, like, I've, I'm really close with all the boys there, so, you know, I can see them going really far into this competition as well, and um, not, this, not just this year, but in the next couple of years. So um, i just got to keep playing footy and then, um, you know, hopefully the contract stuff uh, sorts itself out. Hey, Bryce, so when you were, you know, sort of struggling for some form and, you know, you weren't sure whether you were going to have an NRL career. What did you learn about yourself? Um, you said that you wanted to, you know, make your kids proud, but what else did you learn about yourself for all those young boys out there listening? Um, probably just not to listen to the outside noise, you know. Um, I think these days, especially with all the social media, that kind of thing, um, I know for myself, I, got, I probably got a bit too much caught up in that um, when it was first going on and um, probably read into too many things and let that affect me as well, so... Um, yeah, if I could give someone advice that was going through something like that I did, it's probably just to not listen to the you know external noise, just listen to the people close to you, you know your family, support network, all those kinds of things. So um, that's that's what I really relied on probably in the last year or so. Mm. 
Mate, uh, we'll let you go, and we wish you all the very best for the remainder of the uh, season with Parramatta. It's just great back to see you playing with some confidence and playing some good footy with your old mates again. Thanks, boys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Good. There he is, Bryce Cartwright. Still only a young bloke, still only 26 years old, so he's still got many, many years to uh, uh, have another real decent crack in the NRL. I am broadcasting live in the beautiful city of Brisbane with Gordy Tallis as we watch a couple of jet skis come down the Brisbane River. Absolutely picturesque, Gordy. Is that Spud? It could be Spud. <laughs> <laughs> One of his CDs? Straight up the uh, Brisbane River. Yeah. All right. Well, boys, if there's we're going to take a free food up there, it's Spud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boys, just a score update, um, just to repeat this uh, score that we uh, from earlier here. Remembering, of course, right now the Cowboys are playing the Warriors with seven till half time. The Warriors lead the Cowboys 18 4 as Triple M rocks the footy. The Triple M Sunday Sinbin. Sunday Sinbin right across the east coast of Australia for rugby league lovers. Yes, we will be there for Origin as well, the best coverage of NRL. We've got Paul Kemp, we've got James Triceps, Hooper, Gordy Tallis and Maroon here today. Get your score update shortly uh, on the game between the Warriors and the Cowboys. We'll just get that for you right now, in fact, because... Um, the Cowboys only just scored a try, so it's around a the grounds for tie power, Anthony. And Kubo around tires. the grounds, let's go to uh, 18, Wollongong Stadium 18 and Illawarra. Four to the Warriors. 18, 18 four. Valentine Holmes missed that conversion for okay. the North Queensland Cowboys. That's all thanks to our friends at Tire Power Boys. Let's talk about the Raiders. And before we do, they have only won one game in their last six. They beat the Titans. Surprise, surprise. 20 to 4. But Panthers flogged them. Para flogged them. Hey, careful. You realise Gordon's only about a metre away from you at the moment. You're in the studio. Anthony. Well, what? There's something I'm very on, brave. I know. I feel, oh, mate, you know, I mean, I've got my job <laughs> you, to do here. Just seen a, have you just seen a ghost, you Anthony? You're starting you the, the, the colour started to go joke, out of your okay, face. So, mate, yeah. when we were winning, yeah. you gave nothing to this segment. You gave uh, nothing to the radio. Program. When we were winning. When was that? Can, when was that? I'll tell you what, we'll yeah. beat you guys until about 60 to go. <laughs> <laughs> and you were having kittens, I got right. right. Yeah, I was, actually. I was calling that game, too. <laughs> now, but in the Fair Dinkum department, uh, we'll get to the Titans. Don't worry. That's, uh, that's for another discussion. <laughs> But the Raiders, now, Panthers, Para, and South have all given it to them. And the Cowboys come back from nearly 20 points down. You've all seen the games, Gordy. Let me start with you. What's wrong with the Raiders? I think it's a bit of everything. I think that they're tired. They've been up for so long. Um, their star players are probably tired because they drive um, um, the stuff. And, you know, I, you know, I think that they probably need a bit of injection. I think... They're finding out who they are. So when Josh Hodgson, it was his side. And when he got injured, they played another style of footy. And then he's come back in and they're quite not gelling, you know, because he wants to be the star, being the number nine. And he deserves it because that's the style of player he is. And then Jack Whiten doesn't get the ball or George Williams. And then they've had injuries as well, you know. Chans and, mm. you know, mm. Papali and those guys are having a rest because, you know, they've got bigger issues to pry. But, you know, maybe they're big players that have been up for a long time, played a lot of footy, you know. Haven't haven't performed to the level that they should, mm. and that's the thing. Hoops they rested a couple last week, and then in the warm up, poor old Georgie Williams was injured. Yeah, yeah I don't think you can understate the loss of chance Nickel Clockstad when the Raiders made that grand final a couple of seasons ago. Now uh, all of their big gun players were in form, but he particularly was most likely the find of the season in terms of nobody expected a whole lot out of chance when. The Raiders initially got him out of the New Zealand Warriors system and he, he really took off and, and caught fire. So then they've got some issues with some of their other big-name players, as you touched on, George Williams, injured in the warm-up uh, leading into that game earlier this weekend. Uh, off the back of that, Josh Papali'i, I don't know exactly the details of what is going on there, but I know his coach, Ricky Stewart, has said that the, they need to get the old Papa back and I think Josh has spoken himself uh, that... You know, rugby league just isn't his top priority at the moment. So there's obviously quite a bit going on behind the scenes in terms of the Raiders. They've got a couple of good weeks now. They face Newcastle and they face the Bulldogs. If they, they can chalk up a couple of wins, then they can start to turn things around. Mm. Well, um, before we go to you, Paul, I've got some audio here on Ricky Stewart talking about just a, a few dodgy ref decisions. Have a listen to what Ricky has to say here. This has been happening a lot this year to us, but it's 
I'll look like a whinger, which I don't really give a shit about, being labelled the whinger. But when you get a game out there where it's 8-1 in penalties, I just think that um, probably needs a, needs a discussion. And, and your point is that even though it's seven resets to nil in your favour, it doesn't equate to eight penalties to one again. The ruck was so slow tonight, mate. So slow. I mean, I, I can't believe it was only seven. But please don't... Probably sounds like it, but you know, I'm not being disrespectful to um, South. So they... They're playing good footy at the moment, and I thought we uh, equalled the um, performance tonight. I was, I, was, I was happy with the number of uh, a big part of our game, but uh, again, as I said, we can't keep giving away cheap 12, 18 points a game. That's what we're doing. Good. Well, I, I got to say, Paul, at the moment the restarts are driving me, Burko, especially mm. around tackle one. Yeah, I, I think the NRL it's becoming an issue for the NRL. All the clubs have already they've worked out that on tackle one, they generally will give a reset away because it's only one extra tackle. Everyone says, oh, six more tackles. It's not. It, it, go, it just restarts the count from tackle one. So you, you're adding one extra tackle, which is not much. But what you get, the advantage you get out of that is teams, because they're slowing that first tackle down so much, they're, re, they're really setting their line well. And it allows them to then dominate the whole set of six to come because they're coming off the line fast. Whoever wins the first tackle generally wins the set defensively or or attacking wise and that that's allowing the, the the defense to win the first to win the set by giving away that just one extra tackle and out of that uh it's causing a lot of frustration for the coaches i think the nrl i heard brad fitler say this earlier today on channel nine and i, I really agree with him and i think the nrl's got to say you know what it's a professional foul yeah we we seem to have this idea that professional fouls can only be sin binnable when they're in try scoring opportunities but the NRL just got to say, mate, it's a professional foul. You're deliberately holding him down for benefit, for a professional benefit. So, therefore, you're going to go and do time in the sin bin. And once you put a couple in the sin bin, and people say, oh, that's too harsh a penalty for something like that. Yes, it is. So, don't do it. Once you put a couple in the bin, because of that, they will soon stop doing it. Mm. But at the moment, every club is giving away t- uh, penalties, particularly when you're coming off your try line, because in the old days... When you got a penalty rather than a restart, at least you're allowed, you got a, a kick for the line. You can kick it 20, 30 metres upfield and put yourself in better field position. Now you can't even do that because you just and, get a restart. You give away and it was for, one extra and tackle. It come in, yeah, and it come in for players slowing it down and the players going up to the referee and ring, whinging and, you know, taking 10, 20 seconds out of the con- contest. Your line gets set. Everybody gets their breath back. Well, that's gone out of the game now, so with the reset. But when they do it on tackle one, two, and three, well, that should be a penalty so they can just kick and play on. And they can't argue with you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So then it's going to go back to penalties, and then they'll slow it down. So all they want to do is slow down the game. And they're yeah, doing because, it on the just put one in the bin. Get their line. Yeah, that's Just right. put one in the bin. That, and then that will stop it. Yeah. All right, we, we'll take a break here, boys. We're going to lighten things up a little bit. Uh, of course, we've got Why that, is that game for is you. Is Kenty going home yet? For, we're going. Uh, Paulie's, Paul is going home at 3 o'clock, oh, right. after which Benji Marshall joins us. Now, there's a bit of a drama here because Why? Benji and I are both uh, – um, and I didn't book this, Paul, before you make any comments about cashies or anything, but Benji and I are booked in for the same corporate function this Friday. Mm. We hardly speak to each other. And we're going to have to hit the stage together. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays so out. You're still complaining about the fact that he won't return your calls. Oh, mate, I've, that, that ship sailed. That ship sailed. Right. You okay. know, for, I'm getting so a lot of So how are you going to be call- able to work with him then if you, if you don't like the bloke? Well, mate, unlike him, I'm a professional. I'm a professional. <laughs> uh, you know, and I didn't say I didn't like the bloke. I love the kid. Oh, I want right. to, I want to, you know, make Triple M his second home. Sorry, I, I keep get, I keep mixing up what home. I hear off air and on air. So sorry, mm-hmm. you do I, like the bloke on air, though. I don't think you? the phrase you're looking for, Anthony, is money talks all languages. Yes, I think that right. is the phrase I'm money talking makes about. Friendships. And we are, well, I mean, you're not here today for the love, are you? Here to get paid, aren't you, Hoops? Correct. And while we're on that, okay. Anthony, I'm glad yeah. you raised it. This was going to mm. come up in Maroon Confidential. But we'll raise it now, seeing as how uh, it's, the opportunity has presented itself. So can you please confirm or deny uh, that you have been badgering, accosting, uh, pressuring Triple M staff mm. on Triple M time yeah. to put video packages together right. for yourself yeah. for corporate purposes outside of Triple M mm. without the mention of so much... 
of a cracker, a dollar, a cashew nut, any form of remuneration at oh, all. Yeah. Yep. So we're not just monopolising the photocopier for trivia purposes on Triple M time. <laughs> the not to mention the network paper supplies. Yep. And not the coffee and sugar you take food on their desk. Yep. <laughs> everybody's morning tea. Yeah. But the poor girls the... who came in the other day and found all their Easter eggs were gone. <laughs> but you've had the blowtorch on Tony Soprano to <laughs> yeah. put together video packages <laughs> yeah. for corporate well, entertainment yeah. purposes. Just to be clear, just to be clear, what happened was... Um, as you know, I um, I do a lot of these corporate and sports lunches. I do them for money because I love money, and I do them for money. I don't go and do them for nothing. So if you're about to call up and say there's one we need you to do for nothing because it's a charity, no, I'm not doing it for nothing before you waste your time. Uh, so what I asked uh, Tony Soprano to do was uh, make up a little USB with Nathan Highmarsh and Brian Fletcher on it. Why? Because the three of us are coming up to here on Magic Round, mm. um, because Triple M's paying to fly us up, so why not, because I can bludge the airfare off Triple M, why not go to Brothers Ipswich and do this gig out there with Fletch and Hindy? But the why only... wouldn't you ask me? I did ask you. Well, you know what, Gordy? I hate to... You know what the honest truth is? <laughs> I offered you up to them, but they didn't want you. They wanted Fletch and Hindy. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. That's and, not true. And um, <laughs> the only thing, part of that you got wrong, Hoops, the only part of that you got wrong... Um, <laughs> Uh, was that um, uh, you, you I did actually no offer to Tony, Tony Soprano, I did offer him um, some money for his services and time. How much? Well, that, hang uh, on. No, 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 no. Well, because Tony can walk in mm. and we can get him on the mic. There's mm. nil truth in that, Anthony, because no, he not... said there was absolutely zero folding, yeah. nothing mm. whatsoever yeah. mentioned. Well, you won't, don't want to get on the wrong side of him because he is part, one of the big families out in Liverpool. Right? <laughs> but just to be clear again, so that we don't have to keep com going through this comp uh, conversation, there's a lot of teams around South Junior League, uh, in particular one based around the airport. Mate, I don't do them for nothing, okay? If you want to – do you go to work for nothing? Because I don't. If you want to work for nothing, <laughs> knock yourself out. One you guy should. says Paul Kent does it for nothing. Well, buddy, you get Paul Kent to do it for nothing. You did one for nothing the other night, Hoops, for the Leichhardt Wanderers, and you nearly ruined it. Why? <laughs> because you don't know what you're doing, okay? I don't do them for nothing. I'm not going to start doing them for nothing. <laughs> so let's let be the last time we have that chat. We'll take a break and we'll come back <laughs> and say goodbye to Paul Kent as Triple M rocks the footy. The Triple M, Sunday Sinbin. And welcome back to it. We've just got a, a quick update here. It's halftime, Warriors 24, Cowboys 4 at halftime, Warriors 24, Cowboys 4. Nick Arima's got a try, Berry, Murdoch Masilla and Adam Pompey have all got tries. Hoops, Gordy Tallis and Paul Kent. Well, Paul, this is where we say goodbye to you. We'll catch you on NRL 360. Yes, you will, Anthony. Goodbye. Look, just before I go to, I will talk about you undercutting people to get yeah. your gigs right. I heard you talking off air before with Gordon. Gordon mm -hmm. charges the premium. You like to figure out what everyone else is, yeah. is mm. selling themselves for, and you come in just under. I do. So I think yeah, it's important that people gigs. know that mm. when they get you in for the next gig, that yeah. they get basically getting the cheapest bloke around. Well, as long as they know, Paul, this is good, because as long as they know they've got to pay for it, let's just be clear. Nobody, including me, goes to work for love. So please... Let's be clear. Every week, you blokes bring bring this up. No, I don't do them for nothing. I'm not going to. Have start you ever doing done for one for nothing? Do the occasional one out of the goodness of the no, bottom of your heart. Is there any kindness in that heart for junior I do all rugby league? South Sydney or? Football Club, South Sydney Football Club, South Sydney Players Association. Oh, so the one of the richest clubs you? around, you yeah, do yeah, for nothing. That's what I do. The, the yeah. one so club that can probably afford you. You don't get free Chinese and free tickets, and you don't get free yeah, merchandise. I get all that. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Okay, so that's contra. Mm, mm. So that's not free. That's contra. Right. Well, anyway, what you three need to do is start worrying about yourselves. Okay. You worry about yourselves, all right? Uh, well, Is it are you okay? No, that's okay. That's I think asking. now, right, we're, we're talking about each other's personal stuff. Paul, you need to cut back on your social living, your social life. You're out of control. You're a fetish. I'm Tomcat. You are out of control. <laughs> you're right. an alley cat. Look at and, uh, and, and, and uh, God's honest truth, I met uh, Gordy at the Caxton Street, the Caxton Hotel. He was eating a cheeseburger, which he, which he bludged off them for nothing. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, I didn't pay for it. Right. And hoops. Mate, you are. Uh, let me tell you something about you, mate. If Paul Kent, you like, oh, Paul Kent's got chicken twisties. I want chicken twisties. Whatever he says, you say. We'll talk about right. this off air. No, let's uh, talk about I'm, it on air, Anthony. No, we'll talk about this off air. Right. Warriors 24, Cowboys 4 is Triple M rocks the footy. The Triple M. Sunday Sin Bin. Welcome back to it. Uh, it's the uh, Triple M Sunday Sin Bin. At 4 o'clock today, we've got the 
uh, Dragons-Tigers game coming up for you. Important game for both those sides, obviously. And right now we've got the Warriors leading the Cowboys 24-4 at halftime. Uh, we've got Hoops, we've got Gordy Tallis, we've got Maroon. And joining us for the last hour of the show, Benji Marshall. Welcome to the Sunday Oh, Cindy. mate, what a privilege to be part of Happy Hour for starters. And yeah. just to mm. kick it off, mate, I thought you were very funny in the last segment. You, you should stay in Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest you've uh, ever been. 2-0 to you, you against Hoops, by the way. No, I'm, I'm fired up, mate. I'm fired up. I'm just been bullied enough about all this, mate. Yeah, yeah. Benz, well, I'm sick on. of hearing about how you don't work for free. That's for sure. Well, mate, I don't. Do you? Do you work for free? Sometimes. Well, well <laughs> when? when? Do, you, do you play for South for free? Oh, almost. No. <laughs> do you come here for free? <laughs> almost. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, look, let's leave that alone. Okay. Rabbitohs had a win the other night, um, but it come at a, a bit of an expense bench because uh, Adam Reynolds is injured. Cam mm. Murray's injured as well. Yeah, um, some big losses there, um, you know, and obviously our captain, Reno, who's been playing really well, and Cam Murray, I think, who's the sort of holds the team together. He's, you know, sort of the glue to our side. So, um, yeah, really big losses. But in saying that, we've got a really good depth in our roster where uh, we can cover those positions. So uh, we're in a really lucky spot. Hmm. And it's a big game, though, this week. you got Melbourne on Thursday night. Uh, it's a home game for South. How... Yeah. In, how does the a team like yours approach that in the in the fact that now you've got Reynolds injured, you've got Cam, and obviously Latrell Mitchell's injured as well. Does a coach say to you, okay, we've got three out, but we've got to do this and that and the other, or does he just – it's just no excuse at all. you just got to go out there and get the job done. No, it's no excuse at all. Like, whoever comes in has to get in and do your job. And, like, you see the Roosters are a classic example. Like, you know, the amount of players that they've lost over the past few weeks and big-name players and – the players who have just come and stepped in have just done their job, and the same the same's for us. We're playing Melbourne, who are going great guns, and you know, ugly the arguably the the form team of the comp with Penrith, and um, we're going to be have, have to be on our game because to be fair, the last couple of games we started really slow and have come back with second half good performances. But against a team like Melbourne, like in the first round we played them, we let them get to 22 nil head start. You can't do that against Melbourne and expect to win. So um, we're just going to be have to be up for that game, and like I said, whoever comes in has to do the job. Mm. And, and Benj, what about on the back of, you, you saw what happened with uh, with uh, Brett Morris last night. You, you'd have got yeah. to know Brett over the years. Yeah. Oh, really sad, mate. Um, and, you know, to be honest, everyone's saying, um, you know, we might have seen the last of him. But if he really if he really, really wants to carry on and play, I've got no doubt he could. You know, there's no doubt. The way he was playing this year, last year, I, I still think he's within the top two, three wingers in the game, even though, you know, for his age. And everyone talks about age, but your age is your attitude. It's how hard you want to train. It's how much you want to put in in games. And if you've watched Brett Morris play, particularly this season, you know, he's been in their top two, three players every week. He's a massive loss for the Roosters, Brett Morris. And um, you know, although he has hurt his knee, he, he can, if he wants to play again, he can. Yeah, Benji, but what about, you know, when you're in the team environment, everything's ticking over nicely. They say he doesn't train a lot every week because he's managing his knees. Would that be hard at his age to, you know, to stay motivated to train by yourself? Well, as, as you know, Gordy, it's up between yeah. the ears how, how much you want it, yeah. how much you want it. And if his mind's telling him, you know, now's the time, well, then it's the time. But if there's something still ticking, you know, in your brain and in your heart that makes you really want to still be out there playing, then there's no limitations to what yeah. you can do. It doesn't matter how old you are. But once your mind gives up and your body gives up, then that's probably the time. Benj, what about we saw those um, scenes with his brother con consoling him in the sheds last yeah. night. What is it like in the sheds for blokes like me who, who never get to go into the sheds or, or experience that? If you really uh, want to, mate, I can take you in one time. Is that oh, what you're really? getting at? Well, mate, I mean, I, I, the last thing I'd expect is to you to do something for me, but look, I would take you up on oh, that I wouldn't if you'd be like for free, that. Ah, Benji. I'm joking, mate. I'm going, uh, yeah, but yeah, no. the sheds. But, but but when when a player comes in like that, and obviously he he sees that that's um you know it might be the end of his career. How hard is it to go over and console him? Obviously, there we see his brother doing yeah. it. But what are those situations like? Yeah, really tough as a teammate. Um, you know, and the one thing you you do in a team is you really care for your teammates. And when you see someone, um, especially when there's potentially that it could be his last game ever in his career, it, it probably hurts a bit more. But um, you just get around your mates. You just get a, get amongst it and, and try and 
um, show your support where you can. And um, yeah, I've been in that position where you're sitting there and other people are giving you attention. And um, it's just a nice feeling to have all the boys come over and show that they really care about you. You could see with that vision from the Roosters Sheds last night, what a respected and loved figure yeah. that Brett Morris is at that club. It wasn't just his twin brother, but Trent Robinson, the coach, was super emotional. I think there was even some vision of uh, the chairman, Nick Politis. He looked quite emotional himself. Other players, Jared Wayrett Hargraves, the minute that he got in, and he'd already, even though he was on the sideline when Lindsay Collins was injured and did his ACL, he raced inside the Newcastle Inner Sanctum and wanted to go and speak to Lindsay immediately while the game was still going on. So that shows you uh, what a tight-knit bond the Roosters playing group and club has, and that's the reason why they are such a successful organisation. Yeah, the, the hardest part, I reckon, was seeing Brett's actual face, you know, the yeah. emotion, and you could see how much it was hurting him. Mm. And as a, as a fan watching at home, um, you know, and, and a player, that was hard for me to watch. You know, it was hard for me to see. So you can only sympathise with what he's going through and, you know, all the best to, to Brett and whatever happens there. But, yeah, you're right. The Roosters do show a lot of care for their players, and with the concussions and all that stuff, they've, they've led the way in that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, something to be really proud of as a club, I think. Hey, Benj, also the other uh, off-field discussion through the week has been this talk of, uh, of, a, of two tiers, two tiers, two conferences Conference, in the NRL. What, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, well, I guess some people like it and some people don't. But me personally, I, I just reckon it just takes away a little bit from um, the, the matchups of playing both sides. Like, everyone's in the same competition. I'd rather it be – it's an equal – not where one team from here and one team from there can make the ultimate grand final. I want mm. everyone to be able to have that opportunity no matter where it is to make that grand final. And that's just the personal preference. Um, but I'm also open to if we need to expand the game, then we need to expand the game. But, um, yeah, I'm not convinced on the on the conference system myself. Your coach. Yeah, uh, I think we need more information about it and how it's actually going to work. And it does work in America, but there's 400 million people and probably 40 teams in each Mm. You know, there's probably 20 teams in each conference, which is pretty much the size of our competition. So Wayne's big, I know it's they? successful in other codes, but, you know, sometimes, you know, don't change because it's not broken. Yeah, it's been around for a long time, Gordon. And I think initially where uh, the concept was raised was Ron Massey, uh, before he passed, was a big supporter of it. Jack Gibson went over to the States uh, when he was still coaching him before he passed and also tried to learn a lot from the way that they do things over there. They came back and presented it as an idea. And I know that of the current NRL coaches, Wayne Bennett is probably the biggest supporter. He's the one who's yeah, been it. driving it heavily behind the scenes. He has the ear of Peter Volandis. Uh, I think Phil Gould is also heavily involved in um, the concept, workshopping it and what would be the right system and the right number in terms of uh, you know, teams and conferences. Is for me is I, I've been playing for too long where I, I'm not good at change. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a, I'm just not used to It's a bit scary to see what that looks like or understand what that looks like. But you, you don't know how it's going to work until you actually see it. But I reckon the Queensland Cup and the New South Wales Cup is probably the example of how it works yeah. with the way they come together. But I don't know. It just feels a bit different for me, you know? Yeah, you, you think that it, it could fly. Like, if people of that ilk are pushing it behind the scenes, then clearly it, it has got a lot of merit to it. But I, I'm a bit like you, Benji. I'm a traditionalist, mm. and I just wonder how, if you haven't got... We haven't got the luxury of having 350 million people like what they do over yeah. in the States um, and, and having the talent pool that they do over there to select from. So that would be a couple of the initial hurdles for me. Mm. All right, boys, we'll uh, take a break there. And we've got Benji Marshall joining us for the last hour. And at 4 o'clock today... What's the score, mate? The Can you give us an update? 24-4 at half time. We'll get an update. Hang on, on Anthony, I'll give, you, I'll give you an update. It's 24-16. What? Are Those you serious? updates, thanks to Ty Power. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, see, I'll tell you what. 12 well, minutes see, gone in the second see, mate, half. We're slower in Queensland. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're he's just still, he, it's still uh, four, yeah. Gordy's just sold me a dump there because it's not on in the studio and I was waiting for the break so I could check it. And uh, it's 24-16, so it's a bit of a comeback there for the Cowboys. But, boys, we'll take a break. We'll come back with a thing called What Does the Fox Say as Triple M Rocks the Footy. <laughs> The Triple M Sunday Sin Bin. And of course, it's the Sunday Sin Bin thanks to our friends at Tire Power right around New South Wales and Queensland. Benji Marshall and so too James Hooper, Gordy Tallis, and Maroon. But before we go any further, uh, if you are having a little flutter or any on any of these um, games this uh, today or into next week, you do it with our friends at Ladbrokes. And of course, they are the people we like to deal with. So to get the odds on what's happening in this game today between the Dragons and the Tigers, here is our man, Tom Hackers Hackett. What's doing with this game, uh, Hackers? Who do the punters like? 
Hello, Maroon. It's been a pretty good betting match this one. Money for both teams, but the late money is coming for the St. George Illawarra Dragons. They're now into a dollar forty. They're going to start this clash as clear favourites. Tigers were well back earlier in the week. Now out to three dollars though. So late money all with the Dragons. Yeah, the poor old Tigers one and six hackers. They need to show something today. What about in the first try scorers market? Are we looking at Matt Dufty? Are we looking at David Nofaluma? What's the market say? Cody Ramsey is actually the favourite here, Hoops. He's $9. He's scored a try in four of the Dragon Bluff five home games. He's in pretty good form. Max Fagai is there at $10. David Nofaluma and Dusty, as you mentioned, always top here at $11. Zach Lomax has been in good try scoring form. He's $11. The value, I wouldn't be shocked to see Corey Norman have a good game this afternoon. He's currently $19 in first try scorer betting. I think that's a little bit of value. Righto, Hack Meister. This is a perfect game for a same game multi, brother. What do you got? Yeah, I think this will be reasonably tight, reasonably low scoring. So I like the under in total points. I think Matt Dusty will score at any time. David Nofaluma will score at any time as well. That'll get you $13.17. Nice little way to finish the round. Okay, mate. Well, look, you know, if you're going to have a bet, we do it with your boys at Ladbrokes. Thank you for your time, Hackers. Have a, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thanks, boys. Have a great game. Ladbrokes bet ticker is a real-time stream of incoming bets. Uh, so if you want to have a crack at it, like the stock market, only more interesting and better. Only at Ladbrokes Gamble Responsibly, it's time for this. <laughs> what does the fuck say? All right, uh, Hoops, you uh, haven't really... Uh, look at your run metres today. You've done absolutely nothing. So <laughs> now's the time to come off the back fence. What does the fox say? Uh, and we're going to start with the latest on Adam Reynolds. Yeah, the only reason you're saying I've done absolutely nothing, Anthony, is because you got barbecued good and proper earlier no, I didn't, and you've mate. been no, I didn't, sucking mate. lemons and spitting no, the pips out ever since. No, no, uh, Adam mate, Reynolds, mate. your man at the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Everybody wanted him to stay in red and green uh, because of the magnificent storyline that it is. He's a local junior, it's his favourite club. He's grown up supporting the Bunnies uh, ever since he was in nappies, but unfortunately that won't be the way that it unfolds next year. The Broncos are making a big late bid to try and convince Adam Reynolds to go to Red Hill, but I don't think uh, it will go anywhere. In all likelihood, he's going to be in black, white and blue. Uh, he'll wear the Cronulla Sharks jumper number seven next season. Uh, great signing for Craig Fitzgibbon, who'll spearhead the, the new generation at Cronulla from October onwards, and I think that deal in all likelihood will probably get nutted out within the next week. Okay, so it's not done yet, but you're pretty sure it'll happen. It's, it's not It's not over the line. Like I say, mm. the Broncos have decided that they want to make a big late play. Uh, their coach, Kevy Walters, is down here in Sydney today. Uh, their new CEO, Dave Donner, he's also with him. Uh, and as much as I think the Broncos will put a strong package together, I think the lure of remaining in Sydney um, and going down to the Shire, it's not that far from the Bunnies. It's not mm. the ideal situation for Adam, but I think he understands it's professional sport and you can't always um, get the fairy tale ending. Uh, but uh, let me ask you this before we move on, Benji. Uh, somebody like Adam Reynolds, who's played all his footy at that one club and had so much success there, uh, and been around that area all his life, if he's got to move on, is there something to be gained personally from just picking up the family and, and moving away and starting again? Well, there is, potentially, but you've got to think where you're going to play your best footy as well, like what's going to be the best opportunity for you. And I think, you know, money is a big part of it for some people, but sometimes you can go to a club and it's not going to be where you're going to play your best footy. And what you get judged on week in, week out, as we've seen with a lot of the, the big money players, is how you play your football. So... I reckon it's a really important decision where, where Adam thinks he's going to play his best and um, that should play the biggest factor. You know, the money's all nice in that, but you want to be playing good footy as well. Yeah, that, that's, that's well said. I, I don't think any other clubs are going to suit him as much as South mm -hmm. and playing his best football is at South. I saw Andrew John through the week and I remember Brisbane, we threw the, mate, we threw the city at him <laughs> and he goes, I had to take, no, seriously, like we did when yeah, I right. go. And like we all went and had dinner with him and he goes, I had to take the money out of it and where did I really want to play? Right. So that's what you've got to do and where you feel attached to. And if Adam talks about South the way he does and I grew up here, well, that's the well, that's where he's going to play the best. Okay. Well, he wants right. to stay, Gordy. There's no question about that. But I think where it got a little bit him. complex, where it got complicated was they only prepared the Bunnies to offer a 12-month deal. Then rolling forward assessed year upon year. Whereas... 
Cronulla and Brisbane so South are the looking best. at three-year deals, and we're talking upwards of you know two, two point three, two point four million dollars. And that's what you got to look at: the club that knows him the best, the club that looks after him. He goes there every day. If they're only prepared to offer him a year, well, there's got to be something else. Well, I think there's a variety of reasons behind that. I don't think it's one. Necessarily, sort of one back. significant. No, I don't see. No, worried. that's a first. I don't reckon that's. But we, no, Benji, trains, you're here. He does he? Does he miss sessions? No, he hasn't missed one since. I've been Wayne Bennett's gone on the record saying he hasn't missed a session since he's yeah, been he the coach. Yeah, he hasn't missed one this year. So I think that's a furphy. Um, but certainly there are other reasons, Gordon. Like there's a variety of them. They've yep. got a couple of good young kids coming through the ranks, and they yep. feel as though it's, they can. Yep. They've got the right structure and balance of the team. They can let the next generation come through as well. All right, boys. Warriors 24, Cowboys 16, 16 and a half gone second half. Now let's move on. Uh, Hoops, uh, Parramatta great again last night all over the park. They look mm. good. Brad Arthur's obviously doing a good job there as their coach. Yeah, well, just on the theme of uh, money and, and happiness and the fact that money doesn't necessarily mean everything in this day and age in rugby league. And you know, a lot of coaches get paid damn good money in excess of a million dollars a season. But I think you'll find next year at the Parramatta Reels, um, you know, the Eels management like to run a really tight ship these days. And they went to Brad Arthur last year and, and said, look, we're looking at extending you for next season as well. But they actually made him take a haircut. Um, and, and I think it was a, a six-figure sum. And he didn't even flinch. He just went, yep, yeah, okay, right. I want, if that's where yeah. the cards are, no worries. I love my job. I want to be the coach who leads this club to its first premiership since 1986. And he just gets on with the hard yakker of putting the shoulder down um, and getting on with business. I don't so, mind that because you back yourself. And then great. once you win, then you can start naming your price. Well, that's it. And and in reality, all NRL coaches, whether you're the lowest paid or the high, they're, they're all on damn good money. But mm. it's a high-pressure gig. Oh, it, it comes is. with, you know, it's a 24-7. It's been the uh, least friend. job secure in Australia anyway. That's the it. least well, job security. We saw, well, yeah, we saw five coaches moved on last season. So it's a brutal industry. But I think there's an example there for all players players and coaches as well, that if you love what you're doing and you're being well paid, well, money isn't necessarily Marine always be everything. A coach then. <laughs> well, that, no, well, that's right. I was going to say, no. see, BA should be a little bit more like Hoops and Kenty and Gordy and just want to work for nothing like great Australians. But anyway, we'll leave that there. <laughs> oh, well, you pay for talent. Mitch Moses. <laughs> you pay for talent, Yeah, exactly. Mate. Correct. You pay for you're correct. Sour, you Anthony. Uh, M- <laughs> Mitch Moses, what about, he? he's obviously, we talked about this halfback smorgasbord that's going on at the moment, this halfback uh um, who's going where? Mitch Moses. What about this option hoops for round 10? Yeah, the halfback merry-go-round. Look, the Brisbane Broncos, again, are also having a red-hot crack at trying to get Mitchell Moses to be the playmaker who helps them rebuild Red Hill. Uh, Mitch has got an option in his favour, which lasts until round 10, which is obviously coming up in a week and a half's time. I think irrespective of whether he takes up the deal or not by round 10, he's going to be in blue and gold next season. He loves Parramatta. Uh, they're a top four side at the moment. They're a genuine chance of winning a grand final. I can't see why he would want to leave, uh, no matter how much money other rival clubs were willing to throw up. So I think we'll see that deal get done. Um, but it's, there's just a little bit of haggling going on in, behind the scenes of, around the fine print. Right. Well, it does. Yeah. I, well, that was going to be my question. Does it have that West Tigers feel to it, where he's just going to shop himself around and bump up his price, or? When push comes to shove, will he go? Yeah, it's a good question, Gordy. I, I don't think he's trying to... Uh, look, in fairness to Mitch, I think Mitch just wants to focus on the footy and wants to yeah. play his best for the Eels. And I think he's probably communicated That's with Parramatta. That's the best thing, mate. You let your footy do yeah. the talking. That's it. He's, he's doing that at the moment. That's it, yeah. Benji. And I think he's probably even communicated with Parramatta that he's more than happy at the club. Uh, yeah. and that he wants to remain at the club long term. But as you know, Gordon, then managers get yeah. involved and yeah. uh, they sharpen the pencil and then they sharpen Who it again. Who is his manager these, these days? Well, uh, normally it's his cousin, Isaac, but he's obviously right. uh, having a holiday at the moment. So it's yeah. actually his brother, Stephen. Stephen. Yeah. He's All doing right. His... Okay. Yeah. See, so, so when you hear the story about Brad Arthur and what he's done for the club, that should be the standard. Agree. Hmm. You know? Hopefully that's how it will shake out. I like I said, I, I think Mitch will stay. It works though, eh? No, unfortunately, no. <laughs> it's, well, mate, it it's good in theory. Play sometimes, Benji, because no, I remember. Yeah, it does, but, but like, um, I remember when I was playing, someone come off contract, and they all come around and said, "Hey, would everybody give five grand? Yeah, you know, and there's twenty players. That's hundred grand. Mm. Yeah. yeah, mate. I'd yeah, mate. I'd give up five or ten thousand mm. dollars to no, play with that guy every, every week. Yeah, that's it. 
Oh, <laughs> oh, oh sorry, right, boys. 900. <laughs> and the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I was just testing to see why you're really on there, but obviously we got it out uh, <laughs> We're going to uh, take a break. Mate, it was 20 us. years ago, Benji. Don't bring it up. Mm. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Houses in Brisbane were only 300 grand. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're going to take a break now. <laughs> we're going to come back with Maroon's Quiz. Oh. And today, the topic... <laughs> As chosen by Benji Marshall. Yes. How many friends does Maroon have? It's an entertainment, <laughs> mate. I've only got a couple and I only need a couple. And let me re- let me reassure you on the list is not Gordon Tallis, James Hooper or oh. Paul Kent. Oh, Let's take a break and come back as Triple M rocks the footy. <laughs> the Triple M, Sunday Sinbin. Sunday Sinbin and welcome back to it. Benji Marshall in off the interchange bench for Happy Hour with Hoops, Gordy Tallis and Maroon. Before we go any further, uh, this weekend only you can get KO... For $5 for the first two months on KO Basic Hoops. It's a yeah, great it, deal. Even as much as you love your folding, I know you would mm. be prepared to outlay that sort of money. Get it now for access to over 50 sports live and on demand. Okay, but you've got to be quick. Offer and Sunday, May 2 for new and returning customers only. We love KO. KOsports.com.au forward slash triple M. Now, do it now. If you make one more comment about me and cash, I will put one on your chin. <laughs> I am not scared of you, mate. Sounds like you a are threat. a big ice cream cone. We'll frame it's time for this. Now, Anthony. Welcome to Maroon's Trivia Night. <laughs> So Maroons Trivia Night, tonight we are looking at entertainment questions around our favourite movies and TV shows. Now, Ben, you've got your little son now, so you're watching a few kiddie shows. Is he old enough yet? Mm -hmm. He loves them. Okay. All right. And uh, obviously, Hoops, you're probably still watching kiddie shows because (laughs) you are feeding him. Got the IQ of a pumpkin. (laughs) (laughs) And you've raised a couple of kids too, uh, Gordy. So I would say that's an insult, Anthony. All right, let's do it. You know that your name is your buzzer. And the first question is, name is your buzzer, remember, to get the point. (laughs) Elsa the Snow Queen is a character from what film? Yes, Hoops. Frozen. Oh, well done, Hoopy. (laughs) One nil. Take it back about the pumpkin, Anthony. I won't be taking anything back, mate. If if anyone's owed an apology around here, it's me, and you'll be giving me one on level four of Triple M (laughs) tomorrow morning. That's where HR is. Question number two. Tell him his dreaming is a line from what Aussie movie? Hoops. Gordy. Hoops. Oh, he's got it. Two nil. Two nil. All right, here we go. He only needs this one to win. Oh, it's up to three. It's up to um, the first one to get to three. Now... Where was you just the mo- the end. I did not. <laughs> I did. <laughs> what are you pointing at? Because you, oh, you saw that too. I, I, I was just oh, 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 You know what, mate? That's what he does You're to Kenty every week. I was trying to help you out. I was trying to help you out. All right, forget it. Sprung. He doesn't want you to win. He doesn't want you to win. What was the name of the car on Dukes of Hazard? Gordy. Yes. General Lee. Okay, I didn't show him. No, it wasn't. Uh, no, the didn't. answer he showed me Honestly, was Chicago. You are a fair dinkum. Honestly, <laughs> the answer he showed how, Chicago. You worry about how many friends I've got. This how you've got happens. any friends? Now we know what happens every week with Kenty. Nah. It's inside right. Absolutely. a training. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a raw. <laughs> I know it is right now. It's a trivia raw. All so, uh, right. Benji, have you got, it's your buzzer work. No, nah, I want someone else to win for once. All right, here we go. Uh, on the TV show The Sopranos, the Soprano family live in what state? Hoops. Yes. New Jersey. Ah, oh, well done, Hoops. Yes. You deserve well done, it, mate. mate. You deserve it. Yeah. You well deserve it. Thanks, there we go. There's the uh, level of intelligence on this show. Congratulations, <laughs> Hoops. You've now won it two weeks in a row, yeah. which is absolutely means we're not going to do that anymore. Maroon's <laughs> quiz. That's the final time. Mate, you're we'll going take... to Radio Fair Trading tomorrow now that we've discovered that yeah. there has been quiz collusion going on and you've been running absolutely. rorts. Mate, but can you you've believe been running I try and... rorts in terms <laughs> no. of your own quizzes? Right, okay. Well, you, you'll be in HR tomorrow anyway, so we'll be able to discuss it there. Let's take a break and come back and preview this game this afternoon. An absolute blockbuster. The Dragons and the Tigers as Triple M rocks the footy. Triple M's NRL primetime. Benji Hoops, Scotty Tallis and Maroon Hoops, can you give us a score update on the Cowboys game? I think Cowboys are coming back. Stand by, stand by, Anthony. Last I checked, it was 24-20. Still 20 And the Cowboys have almost got over the line there by the looks of it, Benj. But the Warriors have forced the error. 24-20, eight minutes to go, Anthony. They're becoming the comeback the kings, the uh, Cowboys. Uh, 
Okay, boys, at 15 minutes time, uh, Dan will be in to call this game between the, the Dragons and the Tigers. So let's start with you here, Ben. You're old, well, they're both your old club technically, but you're, mm. you're most associated with the Tigers and lots and lots of really negative talk coming out of the Tigers this week yeah. about the future of the coach. And uh, I can't personally see, even if you were going to flick the coach, what it does to flick him not eight rounds into the, the competition. Well, yeah, you wouldn't be doing that now. But, yeah, that was a lot of talk that wasn't true. So they'll be bouncing back this week, the Tigers. And the the, the question, though, is which Tigers are going to turn up? Because, against when they played us, they had a bounce back factor and they played really well. And then the week after, they went back to what they'd been producing for the last few weeks. So um, you'd think with a one and six start, they'll be coming out firing today and have a point to prove. And if they can get on a roll and play um, the way they played against South Sydney, I think they're a big chance today. Gordy? Yeah, well, it all depends with both clubs. You know, I was disappointed. I thought, you know, the Dragons would have really showed up on Anzac Day and they've been, and then they were really disappointed to the standard that they set against Parramatta. But <clears throat> you'd think when it comes, when push comes to shove today down in, down in Wollongong, you would think the Dragons would have a little bit too much firepower for the Tigers. But, um, you know, you just don't know yeah, with these clubs. You, don't. you know I mean, like, you're like, I can't tip either of the clubs with any certainty. Mm. I thought the Dragons, I felt like the Dragons, Gordon, had turned a corner. And I think a few of us agreed that the Dragons were a good chance yeah. to upstage the Roosters on Anzac Day. That wasn't the way that it unfolded. They started well, but um, they came up with a couple of key positional changes. What did you think of Jack yeah, it was Bird? A bit, it was a bit different. Yeah. Uh, a bit weird. You know, they found a bit of continuity with the way they were playing. I thought they would have kept that the same, but... Um, yeah, well, the coach probably tried something and didn't pay off to how it should, but they look like they're back to full strength today. And um, when they get it right with their defence, like their young guys come up out of the line, they have great line speed. They're really hard to beat, but um, that faded pretty quickly against the Roosters on the weekend. Ben Hunt's the big in for today, isn't oh, he, Benji? Massive. Like when uh, the way that he began this season, and you could see uh, his pre-existing combination with Andrew McCulloch. They mm. were playing flat, they were playing fast, and it was the Dragons of the year that they led the competition for quite a long way, and they were bullying other sides. Well, you can see Ben played with a lot of confidence as soon as Andrew McCulloch got there. He, um, you know, they'd lived together for a long time. They're living together now. They're really close mates, and. Um, Andrew's not the same player that Cameron McInnes and those sort of hookers that he's had where they pick the ball up and run a lot. Andrew's really good at giving the ball when Ben wants it. So Ben's always attacking the line flat and fast. And as everyone knows with Ben Hunt, his strength is his running game. So when he's on the ad line playing flat and fast, he's really hard to stop. And um, you know, against the Tigers, he can have a lot of joy there if they get a lot of quick play the balls through the middle. Hey, Benji, just as a playmaker these days, right, it's probably changed a lot since I played, but... Mm. Your fullback and your nine, who's more important? You know what I mean? Like, like it used to be six and seven. So when I played, it was Elf and Kevy, and the nine you should just get caught, and he just had to pass the ball to those guys. So if you had to pick one player that you needed to be good, who would it be? Would it be a oh, nine? nine for me. Yeah. I think as, as a team, like you can see what Cameron Smith did for Melbourne. When you have a good nine, you yeah. can organise the ruck and then understand when the numbers are on to get it to your strike players out wide. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Fullbacks are great to have and stuff, but yeah. – if you want to build your team around someone who can control the game, I reckon nine's the most important position because well, you get your players onto the ball, you get your forwards onto the ball, your halves get yep. the ball when they want it in front, and, you know, that's the, the qualities of a good nine. So, um, yeah, I like what the nines do. Okay, um, boys, just to go through this uh, Dragons forwards pack before we ask you a couple more questions. So, Blake Laurie and Vaughan will start up front with McCulloch. The back row, Kerr and Tarek Sims. Josh Maguire will start and Tural Fui Mayano will start on the bench with Alvaro, Billy Burns and Cade Ellis. So, wh what do we think? And, uh, Brenji, you think the Dragons will win this one? I actually think the Tigers are going to win, but I do like the way their forward pack's lined up today. I think Josh Maguire has brought a little bit of steel to the Dragons. He's just starting to fit into their system. Um, he's going to bring a little bit of an edge there. And uh, I actually didn't mind the way Billy Burns looked last week. He's looked mm. pretty wiry out in the back row and had a bit of talent, but they're trying to strengthen up, I suppose, with a bit of go forward. You can see with a bigger pack go through the middle of the Tigers and that's where they were poor last week. And if they can do that, we'll, we'll go a long way towards winning. But I don't know, just something about the Tigers and, and from knowing how they operate after what they would have had this week, uh, they'll come out firing, but that emotion only lasts so long Maroon. So, It'll be mm. interesting to see how long they can keep that for today. But if they really want to show how much they're playing for their coach, today's the day. Okay. In Wollongong, this game kicks off at 4 o'clock. We've got it for you on the Triple M Network. And remembering, of course, we've got Melbourne South next Thursday night. It's going to be an absolute blockbuster. What about you for this one, Hoops? 
I hope Benji's right. I hope the Tigers shoot themselves out of a cannon and really hold their hands up and make a statement because after a one and six start, uh, I know a lot of their supporter base uh, have found it really tough. Uh, and there was certainly a lot more expected of the side over the opening rounds of the season. The fact Ben Hunt's back for the Dragons worries me, and being at Wollongong, I'd pref much prefer Jack Bird in the centres with Corey no Norman and Ben Hunt in the halves. I think it'll be closer than people expect, but I, I think the Dragons might have a little bit yeah, too the, much the, class. The Tigers hoops are getting a lot of heat at the moment from mm. the 1-6 and six start. If they go to 1-7, and seven, that noise keeps going. It it'll, doesn't it'll go get, away. It'll so get deafening, Ben. Sure. The only way to get out of that is with a win. And today, I reckon that's what they'll be channeling, Maroon. They'll be channeling a, a win, and um, that's the, the best way to keep the noise away for sure. Okay, what about you, Gordy? <clears throat> I mm. just, yeah, like, I don't know. I... I don't know. Seriously. Like, <laughs> know. It's fair, no, like, well, it's, well, it's, it's, fair. it's spot on, Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Like, 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 mate, with no confidence, nah. I'm going to say that. Like, I wouldn't put your money on them. Yeah. On well, either I side. I wouldn't let you near my money, so don't worry about that. <laughs> but, um, uh, <laughs> you, you know, what, it would seem, though, that... <laughs> God, I've... the last time we opened his wallet, Henry Lawson blinked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, mate, I'm taking the grandkids out for dinner tonight, so, I mean, and you wouldn't <laughs> oh, believe so it. Sizzler, mate, listen, Sizzler, Sizzler, through Sizzler's McDonald's. Closed. <laughs> no, no, well, <laughs> the first thing long. I did was to make sure my Macca's vouchers from New South Wales <laughs> were valid in Queensland, and yes, they are. <laughs> But if we can get back to the footy for a minute, I think I suppose of this dra of these two sides, look, the Dragons are going to win these games. I think. And yeah. Well, if, if you know, if there any chance, and you know, I think their performance um, against Parramatta, and I know that was a couple of weeks ago, but that's what I'm going to lean towards. And Ben Hunt, before he got injured and he played with a broken leg, I thought. You know, he sort of got back to where Ben Hunt was yeah. playing. You know, he was just full of confidence. He was running the footy, and Benji touched on it before. Just, just playing with someone that he knows. He just gets the ball. He gets it on the advantage line. Um, he goes forward. Um, McCulloch's got a kicking game out of there, and Corey Norman just with the left foot. So I think it's freed Ben Hunt's running game. And mm. Dufty's one of those guys that's gonna test all those. Tigers forwards when they get a bit lazy. Yeah, boys, too, we, we look at the top eight as we did earlier. You know, you've got your, um, obviously, your Panthers on 16, Para and Rabbitohs on 14, Roosters, Storm 12. Then you've got a four-point gap. And, I mean, it's only, what, round eight, and we're looking at a four-point gap to the Dragons, um, you know, on, on eight points. So do you think the Dragons will finish in the eight? Because I think it, we used to think that the top eight, was set in stone. I think those last three spots now, Benji, are a bit of a lottery. Well, it's too hard to tell now. I know it's um, a third into the season, but it is too hard to tell. But uh, the Dragons definitely, to your question, can make the top eight with the way they've been playing. And with a full-strength roster and what they've added, I think, to their depth of their roster, I think they can do that. And, um, you know, the, the key, and we talked about Ben Hunt, McCullough, Corey Norman, but for me, the key to them and their attack is Matt Dufty. When Dufty fires and he's getting the ball on the ad line, he's got his four on three passes where he can choose the best pass on the right play of the ball. He's almost impossible to stop. The only problem for the Dragons is they don't get that on enough where they got the momentum to be able to do that. So if they can get Dufty into the game as much as possible, that'll help them get there. But that, that's the key for me is what they can get for Dufty. Their forwards get him going forward and then he does the rest off the back of that. Okay, we'll have that game for you in Triple M very shortly. That's the uh, Dragons taking on the West Tigers in uh, Wollongong. Just before we go, guys, hoops. Yeah, just around the grounds for tyre power, Anthony. 24 to 20 to the New Zealand Warriors. A minute and 15 to go. The clock ticking down. Warriors have got the ball. Tell you what, the Cowboys, they had their opportunities. They were pinned on the Warriors line for about the last three or four minutes, but they just couldn't get across. So it looks as though the Warriors might just be able to hold on here. I tell you what, the Warriors have lost a couple on the bell this year. So good luck to Nathan Brown and the boys with one minute to go. And just before we do go, fellas, yesterday we've got one minute. Great to see Rugby League in rural New South Wales yesterday. Mm. Carrington Park in Bathurst where they love their footy and it was a beautiful day for it. I want to see more of it. Yeah, it looked spectacular, didn't it? The scenes there uh, in the Golden West, Anthony. And I think it's terrific to see Rugby League's going to continue over the course of the coming yeah. weeks as well. You touched on there's a game going to Dubbo, Isaiah Yo, and Matty Burton's hometown. Uh, it's going to be a cracking contest too because I think it's the Panthers and the Bunnies, isn't it? Mm. It'll be a hell of a, a game. Look, they delivered yesterday in spades there. They put on a show. The Panthers, eight victories in a row. And Manly, they had a crack as well. Tommy yeah. Turbo. What a difference he makes to that side. Yeah, well, there was a chance in the second half where the uh, 
where the Seagulls were coming back, but the Panthers were just too classy, too good in the end. Okay, Gordy, we'll catch you on Fox League. Oh, we, yeah, yeah, you certainly will. And Hoops, we will see you on uh, the wrap this afternoon on Fox League as well. Sure will, Anthony. And Benji, we'll see you at the big gig on Friday, mm-hmm. and you're calling the game <laughs> next with Dan. How good. Okay, <laughs> that's about it for us. Don't sound so excited, mate. Don't sound so pumped. It's all good. Uh, we're going to uh, cross to that game shortly. St. George Illawarra take on the West Tigers. Uh, but remember, if you've got to work next Thursday night or you're in the truck, you're in the car, we've got that blockbuster for you next Thursday. The Rabbitohs and Melbourne will play that for you live right here as Triple M rocks the footy.